<laughs> hey, good morning, guys. Welcome to a morning edition of Saturday Night Night. Uh, I have some wonderful, wonderful guests from across the pond, so I thought the best way to do this would have a, a Saturday Morning Night edition here. I am joined by just some, some YouTubers that I absolutely just adore watching on the regular, and I thought, hey, this is a great, great chance to get us all together in the same place and hear how silly my accent is because I am the only one who has just a plain, boring American English accent. They have very <laughs> exotic accents, mm. and I love them. I don't think that Patrick needs any introduction, but I'm going to do it anyway. The man responsible for me learning to love John Gwynn. Yay. Yes, Patrick, how are you, man? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for making the time with my time zone to invite me on this panel. Really. My pleasure. Thanks so much for doing it. And I actually messaged her to make sure I was saying her name right. Issa from Fun Fantasy Books, uh, just one of the most energetic booktubers out there. How are you this morning? Oh, good. Thank you so much again for having my small channel and me here. Oh, no, you're <laughs> growing quick. You're growing quick. I'm very excited for you. Yeah. And I think most people, uh, I know him as Probably like the king of booktube Instagram, but he's really, really growing his channel at a very rapid pace. Johan, Library of a Viking, how are you this morning? Yeah, very good. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, I feel really honored. I've been watching your videos since you were on like less than 3,000 subscribers. Really? Wow. So it's pretty mad to actually be here now. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. You got to give me some tips on how to grow Instagram because I try to do like you and take like pictures of me holding books and it's not going as well as it does for you. So you got to teach me how this <laughs> well, works. Well, I basically posted every day for like 500 days in a row. That oh, that, that's how it works. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. All right. Well, guys, uh, you guys know how Saturday Night Nights work. We don't really have a topic. The topic is, uh, hey, it's four friends sitting at a coffee shop talking about whatever comes up. So we're going to kind of see what happens. But I always like to start this off with just the quick little primer of, hey, what are you guys reading right now? Uh, <laughs> Should I go first? Yeah, you go first. I am reading two vastly different books. I'm reading The Golden Fool by Robin Hobb, a very slow paced. Beating you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm about a book ahead of you here. All right. Oh, man. I'm uh, halfway through this, and I do understand, Mike, where he's coming from when he says this is it's extremely slow. This must, this is probably the slowest Robin Hobb book I've read so far because I still don't really know what the plot is in this one. It but, doesn't have one. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm not That's gonna get not it just it doesn't, it doesn't have one. <laughs> it is slow, but I am enjoying it, but hopefully. Uh, the plot starts to pick up and then i'm reading something totally different with <laughs> i can't even imagine Dead reading house gallows on with anything else i can't even imagine it doesn't make sense man <laughs> <laughs> so um very very different very different experiences but i am enjoying this more now this is my second time i'm trying to get through this book but i made a mistake i watched mike's review of memories of ice this morning oh, and you okay. seemed a bit lukewarm on it so and I usually tend to align with your taste. So I don't know if this is My Malazan really opinions are all over the place, but I'm a Petrick. I kind of want to see this crash and burn so you can make another entertaining uh, Malazan <laughs> as a disaster. Yeah, come on. Really. Um, it's like yeah. a disaster. <laughs> it's not a disaster this time. I'm 300 pages into it, and I'm enjoying it more this time. Um, I hope I will fall in love with the series because I really want to. But Mappo and Ikarian sure. are the bomb. I love them. I love them. So I hope <laughs> they work out for you. Issa, what are you reading right now? So I'm reading Jade Legacy. And oh, ooh. Ooh, yeah. I love that one. We're fans. I'm Best so sad ever. though. Like, I don't want this series to end, and I don't want to feel disappointed. So I was like, I don't want to take it. But now I'm finally doing it. And also, yeah. really different. I'm reading a middle grade book that Gavin recommended, which is called Frost Heart, and I'm body reading that. So I just started that, and it's like super cozy, super sweet. And it's like, okay, do I need some bands? Yes, go to Jade Legacy. So I'm mm. like managing both. Yeah, that, that, that's me reading something really, really just dark and brutal, like uh, like the Mike Shackle books, again, that Patrick recommended to me. And they're awesome, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm, then I'm reading Percy Jackson to my kid at night. It's like, wow, talk about wow. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> Perspective. <laughs> but I think it keeps me grounded, you know, keeps me from being like, I got to go kill something, you know. <laughs> it's pretty good. Patrick, I know you're probably reading like 12 things right now. No. <laughs> at least. I, I don't actually... I can't actually read too many books at once. At most, I can read two. And right now, coincidentally, I am I am actually reading two books at once right now. So the first one is that I'm reading uh, the newest book by James Ellington, uh, The Wheel of the Many. Oh, how is it? Yeah, um, about uh, thirty five percent. So it's still quite early, but yeah, I'm enjoying it so much. I think you will love this one, Mike. It reminded me quite a lot of Red Rising somehow. Okay. And yeah, but it is in epic fantasy version. Yeah, but. Okay. 
the other book that I'm reading, I cannot really say that I'm enjoying it right now. This one is uh, A Crown of Swords, uh, The Wheel of Time, mm. yeah, book seven. And yeah, it it's <laughs> it's infuriating, man. <laughs> yeah. well, I'll say, Patrick, if you're infuriated in book seven, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> it's going to be I... bad. But please read it. I want to see your reactions. <laughs> Oh, it's for crazy. sure, yeah, yeah, for sure. Crazy. Yeah. I, I'm not I, real I, big I, on like the rant videos, but I don't mind salty Petrick once in a while. Petrick, that's <laughs> pretty entertaining. People have been saying I'm too positive on my channel, so maybe sometimes I should unleash oh, no. them. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? So I think that covers everything that we're reading, right? Okay, well, that's great. Uh, I, I, there's lots of uh, people that are, are picking up Mike Shackle because I talked about it. And I, guys, Patrick and Brothers Gwynn, they're the ones who've been – actually, Patrick came up like three years ago when we were together. <laughs> brand new. Like, it was just released. He's like, dude, this is right in your wheelhouse. Like, yeah, I'll get to it. I mm -hmm. did. It took me a while, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really good. Man, I've owned the friend book for two years now. So, And plus, Mike's an awesome guy. He's really, really cool. He, he's really, yeah, really my, nice. that, my, that makes a cool. difference for me. Like with Ryan K, the reason I want to re read Ryan's books is because he's just such a nice guy. And that, that, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. goes a long way for me. You know, I mean, I, mean, I bought seven John Gwynn books without ever reading a single word based off of what Patrick was saying. And because John was just so damn nice and would talk yeah. to you like a complete stranger, but he would just talk to you for like an hour on social media. I thought that, I don't know. That's, that's a cheat code for me with authors. So authors, if you, you want me to read your book, that's a good way to start. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it cannot hurt to be nice. It cannot hurt. Right. <laughs> I, I think so. Uh, read Sword of Truth and No True Anger. Have anybody... <laughs> is, is Terry Goodkind really that bad or has it just become like a meme at this point? I don't know. Well, I, I, I talked about him in my last video and people talked about he was like narcissistic and toxic and stuff outside of like his books as well. So I don't know. I think there are some things he's probably said in the past that people are not happy about. But yeah, I'm not really I wonder sure. if that's like a people don't like the guy or people don't like the books kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think there's, a, there's lots of authors. Sure. I'm like, ah, not the best person, but damn, they've spent a good yarn, you know. So <laughs> I, I've had that. I've had that before, for sure. Yeah, so. yeah. I don't know if I'll find like one person who's really, really positive on sort of truth wants me to do it, and then I'll have like a hundred people feel like don't do it. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Never really touched it. No. My brother-in-law, he swears it's his favorite series. So really? I don't know. Yeah, he loves it. He hasn't read that much fans. He read, he's read quite a bit though. Probably like 30, 40 books. He loves it. Yeah, absolutely loves it. But I don't know. They're also really chunky. Like another fun books, question that I always like to ask guests. I'm gonna start with 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 Isis, and she's like, Oh, I've got the small channel here. What <laughs> influenced you to say, you know what? I'm gonna turn this camera around and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put it out there for the public. What what was your reasoning behind doing that? What, what was your choice there? So it was really not that well thought. So I have always loved reading. I have this massive love for books and also my dad was always an avid reader. He every Friday bought a book for me if I made that book already like read. So kind of like I've always been reading, sharing recommendations with some friends. And when the COVID came, at least here in Madrid where in Spain, we had a lockdown going on for three months. Like we couldn't get out of our houses kind of vibe. And I started reading again and booktube became a hobby in itself. And I was like, this is so cool. Like, this is so much fun, you know, talking about books, finding people, their community vibe, all of that. And I thought like, yay, like, like let's do this. Like, because I'm delusional and I thought everything was going to be so easy. <laughs> it, isn't, it isn't, but it was, yeah, it was just like impulsive decision, but I'm happy. Mm. Uh, well, we're glad that you you did it. Now, when it comes to me, like uh, I like say, uh, it, it's not easy because you know there's so much post production stuff. I can't think of how long it must take Johan to make a video because his editing is like compared to mine. <laughs> Like I, like you and Jay from Caption Words, I'm like I don't know how much time you guys spend in the editing bay, but it's probably more than I do with my entire process of everything <laughs> coming up with the idea, reading the book, recording it, and actually doing it. So that that that, that, that a lot of work goes into that. Yeah, totally. I wish I was able to just speak to the camera for 30 minutes, but I just can't. I write everything down that I say as well. So it just takes ages, but it does help that I'm a student. So it's my schedule is very very flexible. So. Um, that definitely helps. I don't really? have jobs. I don't, I don't have kids. They say, they say they don't have, you know, much time. So yeah, yeah. 
It's funny you say that because when I started my channel, I was actually back in school and staying home with the kids while I was doing, you know, uh, online classes and mm -hmm. stuff to finish my degree. So it's kind of funny that I, I guess I felt like I just needed to have someone else to talk to because I knew no one in real life that oh. read the books I read. You know, if they read, <laughs> read like Grisham or, or, or James Patterson or something, they weren't reading anything that I was reading. Yeah. You, know, you know, so and when I found this community, I was like, wow. And I think about where the community is now and where it was even when I started. It's completely different. You didn't see nearly as many collaborations and stuff as you see now. So, yeah, mm -hmm. the sense of community is mm -hmm. just amazing. But I, like most people were influenced by Patrick and his uh, his Goodreads page because uh, everything, everything I wanted to read, I was like, well, shoot, let me see a Patrick. Yep, Patrick's read it, of course. He's got, he's got some thoughts on it. To a point to where I'll even like message him now and be like, hey, you kind of said this, this, and this in your review. Uh, yeah, they're kind of off the record. What do you think about this particular thing? And, and I think that's always been a, a great lifeline for me to help kind of decide what I read next. But yeah, he's, he's busted my TBR quite a bit, <laughs> I'm sure. He has for everybody, but Petra, what made you decide finally to, to get on, get on YouTube and do it though? Mine is kind of similar, but actually I was kind of, uh, inspired by you as well, but and oh. other booktubers. Yeah. So it's kind of worked both ways for both of us, Mike, but uh, here's the thing. I've been writing reviews uh, before booktube for like four years. Yeah. I think four years. Yeah. That's a long time. And I've written like more than 400 reviews uh, for that. And mm -hmm. it's getting kind of, it's getting to the point where I mean I like writing reviews. I still I still do that even to this day. But you know the interaction on Goodreads is so minimal. It's so minimal yeah. compared to BookTube. I, right now, if I post a review on Goodreads, I probably will get about ten to twenty comments. So that's it. Yeah. That that's at, at most unless I'm talking about Brandon Sanderson's books, of course. <laughs> that, that one will, yeah, that one will always get a lot of comments. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's getting kind of lonely and also a pandemic hits right. Mm. And the pandemic hits and I cannot go anywhere. So I thought I wanted to try something new and I plan to start my booktube channel in March, March 2020, I think. But I keep on delaying myself because I'm just so afraid, so nervous no. of everything until September. <laughs> yeah, it took me six months before I finally caved in and finally started my own booktube channel. And I thought it worked out really nicely for me. Mm. And Hopefully for many readers too, because I can recommend more books to more people. <laughs> yeah, I think about that. I, I said I podcasted before this and I was like, I had a, a mm. constant listening audience, but like there's no like real comment system on iTunes or, or Spotify mm. at the time mm. there wasn't, you know, and I was like, that didn't really, really work. So it's like, you would have no idea if people were liking your content or not. So mm. when I, I started doing those Wheel of Time reviews and all of a sudden I was getting like all these comments like, wow, this is like a whole different thing. And then I learned BookTube was actually a deal. I had no idea that this was a thing. I was like, people talk about books. Like, I thought this was just like, <laughs> trailer reactions was all that was on YouTube, you know? Had no idea this was a whole big thing. But I think about, like I said, I started in 2019, mm -hmm. where it was then and where it is now. I mean, every day I see a new person who's just blowing up really, really quick. You know, they, they have a video with like 50,000 views, like you said, and they're, they're blowing up just like that overnight. It's all it takes. It's all it takes one video to go viral. And yeah, sure. for me, surprisingly, it was uh, Kindle videos. You know, that's, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, that's a long video. But... I actually got to know you because of that video. Because yeah. I was oh, thinking, wow. like, what should I buy? That kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, this is cool. And then it was like, okay, this is a world. <laughs> yeah, I think the Kindle videos and surprisingly, my top 10 horror novels are like yeah. the one that yes. so many people told me they, 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 they found my channel that way. It's, 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 it's really, really unusual. I'm actually quite amazed at that, Mike, because you said that uh, your horror videos usually doesn't do well, but that Nothing. particular video really, really is well, it's it's viral. Right. When <laughs> yeah. I talked to Murphy, she said just, you know, if, if there was an actual like holiday for fantasy books, and if you put a top 10 video out on that day, it would do as well. That's the, that's why she says my 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 top 10 horror one did so good because I did it right for uh, Halloween, which makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. But the thing was, is like I was doing the, I tried to do that theme month where I was doing nothing but horror for the month of October, which was doing awful. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I was like, oh, I've already committed to it. I might as well go ahead and follow through with it. I made that top 10 horror just because I just had extra time that day. I didn't even plan to do that. <laughs> you know, that's my biggest video on my channel. It's weird. It's weird how this works. So it's, it's so strange. Weird. Like my discussion videos like this, uh, some, really really blow up some do nothing and then sometimes one out of nowhere that's just kind of in dormant for six mm -hmm. months all of a sudden boom like i did a, a, a one of these with uh with tori and mm -hmm. theo and i was back in december and it had like two thousand views 
and then mm. out of nowhere, now it's at like 30,000. I have no idea what happened, but I'm glad. Oh, cool. You know, because I can help more people discover smaller channels. That's the whole reason I started, you know, talk about nothing and Saturday Night Nights was a, not that, you know, Patrick and, and Johan are smaller channels, you know, but I, I, I think that they're still growing. The guys are growing every single day. So if I can help do that, that's the whole purpose I want to do this. And also find out how Petrick gets arcs because I still can't do it. <laughs> uh, I got an arc this morning. You want to see what it is? Sure. See, I don't have that. I don't have that. <laughs> is, uh, Mark Lawrence's new yeah. book. Oh, okay. Good. I had, uh, I mean, every once in a while I get, I'll get publishers that email me and it's actually one that I've heard of you know, an author I've heard of that was like, I think I just called for the new Adrian Tchaikovsky, uh, which actually I think is actually out in the UK already, but it's is, not yeah. here. And they asked me about that. And I said, yeah, sure. That'd be great. But mm -hmm. uh, I know there are a lot of them, Patrick, who will actually, Hey, you know, when this book comes out, let me know. I'd love to get your review copy. Something like that. Great. Yeah, that'd be excellent. I definitely want to read that. And then it gets close to release crickets. I can't get a hold of anybody <laughs> or I get like saga press who just like refuses to send me anything. I don't oh, know how you, how you got James <laughs> Islington's book. So saga press wouldn't give it. Brian Lee Durfee had to actually send me his final draft from his computer because Saga Press would not send me a copy of uh, of, of the, what is it? The Lonesome Crown. Yeah. That makes yeah. no sense. It, it was the same for me, you know, uh, for the Lonesome Crown. I got it from Durfee as well. <laughs> so I didn't got it from Saga Press for, yeah, I know. I know, right? I agree with you. I'm actually quite shocked that you don't get ARCs, Mike. I mean, I had some. I mean, the thing is, like, usually most times I have to go through the author to get it uh, i mean uh john gwen had to basically force orbit to send me uh the, the blood and bone books or not blood, but the uh the, the uh, shadow of the gods he had to basically force them uh so already told you about brian lee durfee joe abercrombie just sends me direct that was the only reason oh, i got the, i got the first all ones you know awesome. so it, it's it's one of those things where it's like it, it's cool and i don't think i'm entitled to any but it's just like why is this so hard you know if you guys want to promote this book why are you not mm -hmm. just sending these out like water to creators mm -hmm. to talk about it because more people are watching the i mean jim butcher told me that more people are watching this than are going to read some magazine some sci-fi magazine about uh, the new dresden files book you know so uh, i don't get it i don't understand why it's such a hard process as a blogger uh, as a blogger myself because uh, yeah as i said i've been writing reviews now for six years uh i must say that yeah if, re regarding engagement views and all that i think booktube well I have to say that it topples over blog by far, <laughs> by right. far. Out of all of my all of my social media, blog is the one that is doing the worst. Like really, really bad, <laughs> really mm. bad. Yeah, for What's me like, anyway. For your blog, <laughs> yeah, yeah, my blog. Yeah, it's like it's just a formality now because publishers actually demands that we post our written reviews there instead of only on Goodreads. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. What Philip's saying and Anthony here that they probably gauge Goodreads popularity. Well, that's why. That's why. That's why Petra gets everything. He gets more than he can. <laughs> yes. I want to say more than he can read, but yet somehow he finds a way to do it. So no, no, no. It's more than more than more than I can read. <laughs> yeah, people tell me all the time, how do you read so fast? I'm like, dude, I read like four or five books a month. I might be fast as some people, but I was like. Patrick does four or five a week. No. Even <laughs> the audio bookers do like 60 or 70 a month. I'm like, what? how is four or five books so fast? I don't know. You guys, you guys think you're fast readers? Nah, I don't. I don't. I'm really not. Right now, ever since I started my booktube channel, at most, and I'm really spending all my time reading here, I probably can read seven books per month. Yeah. Still impressive. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty good. But most of the time, it's five. Most of the time, it's five. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it really depends, really oh. though. Like, if it is a book that it's super easy to get into mm. it, or I also find that if you're already committed to a saga or a trilogy, it's easier to get to like second or third book than if you're mm. studying different books, right? Mm. But I, I also consider myself pretty slow reading. Like, I'm reading in English, so of course it's slightly slower than reading in Spanish, but it's mm. cheaper, though. So, yeah. Mm. So, yeah. according to Sam, it's easier to get gaming review copies than it is uh, book review copies. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, that is very interesting. I though. see. The thing is, like, they're they're afraid of piracy. I would figure they'd be that they'd be that way about gaming more than they would be about books. So, like, who, who's going to sit there and? I mean, if we're talking a physical, advanced copy, who are you really afraid someone's going to sit there with a scanner and scan? <laughs> fancy <laughs> books are eight hundred pages long. They're really going to sit there and do that the whole time. Are you really that scared of it? Like the digital, okay, I get it, but I mean, those are so there's so much protection on those now. I don't even feel like you could do that. I, I just don't think that, I think that's an excuse. I don't know. It's not like I'm asking for you to send me the new Star Wars movie early or something here. here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
it's just wild to me. I think as I've talked to lots of authors, I want to bring up their names because I'm sure they'd like to say anonymous, where they're, they're as frustrated as, as we are. Yeah. With that because yeah, they're, they're, they agree, yes, I want this as many hands as possible. Word of mouth is how I'm going to get most of my traffic. So. Uh, it's just it's just it's just a gripe that i have it's just a gripe that i have yeah i mean that was the thing with this book um i did request it on netgalley and was denied and mike lawrence he then said i'll, I'll he was going to send it to me so hey, that's wild sure. that's wild to me hey let's talk about mark lawrence is anybody here besides besides i've uh, only read two books of his and they've been you ever read any average. i've only uh, read broken empire and i was on it i only read the first book and i was like this series is not for me it makes no <laughs> sense i read one of um what is it called he has like a sci-fi series that is quite like 80s ah it's, uh, it's impossible, his most, impossible, um, impossible times yeah yes yeah the most his most unknown one i read the first book and it was also just it was all right uh, but i feel like the book of the ancestor will probably be the trilogy for me but I don't know. That's my favorite trilogy by Mark Lawrence. I think mm. Mark Lawrence is quite versatile at his writing. I don't mm. click with Broken Empire. I like uh, Red Queen's War, but I love Book of the Ancestor. Yeah, I'm going to do Book of the Ancestor this summer. So I was like, I, mm. enough people, I mean, you and Philip, people that I that I know that my reading style, my, my reading taste align with yours. Mm. I've, got to, I've got to like this author because so many people talk about him. So yeah. Book of the Ancestors seems to be the one I think that I'm going to do next. They're like, if you didn't like Broken Empire, I don't know if Red Queen's War would be the best bet. But A Possible Time is one people recommend a lot just because they, they know I'm a Gen Xer and I love 80s stuff. And that's apparently mm. what it is. So. Yeah, I you mean, with like the Broken... Wow, one at a time. <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> I'm surprised that didn't happen more, honestly. Go on, Patrick. No, no. I, I just think that Impossible Times might work better for Mike. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You'll probably enjoy that one. It's quite like Stranger Things esque in the, or it's like eighties nostalgia, gaming and stuff yeah. like that. So you have me at eighties, honestly. I mean, yeah, and they're short. <laughs> like never <laughs> and it's like two hundred pages per book, so it's not that long. So maybe you could do that one. Uh, with the Broken yeah. Empire, why do people love it that much? Because is the book two and three just so much better? Because book one, I, I think book one was really good. It was book two and three was like, I this guy is really? not any like with first law. Okay, <laughs> these are characters that do questionable stuff. I mean, some stuff that you're like, wow. In any other series, you'd be a villain, but you find yourself rooting for them. I did not root for Jorg once. I was like, someone please off this dude. Yeah. And so with like 300 pages left in in the blast book, I was just like, all right, I'm I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I the thing that. that I I'm so confused by is why is he nine years old? Like, that <laughs> makes, isn't he nine it's, years old? He's he nine 13? years old, and these battle hardened warriors are following him. Or does he? Or is he nine when he escapes, and he's like thirteen when he's like the leader so, of this? So I, he's, got these, he's got these hardened warriors that are following him. That's actually one of my no issues. Friend. Yeah, and that's then you have the scene where he stands in front of like his father, the king, and he's better with words. Than the king is, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that makes no sense. <laughs> I, I understand why people love it. To me, it's just, I mean, I, I hear all the time about uh, the criticism in a lot of the books I like is, oh, the lead character is too much of an edge lord, which led me to Google what the heck an edge lord was. That I've never before. <laughs> you are an edge lord, Mike. And then I was sad that I that I googled that. And uh, but uh, I, I, I was like, Jorg is like the biggest definition there of this. I, he's just he's just shitty for shitty. Sake. It's like, how what can I do to make him even shittier? Oh, okay, <laughs> let me just make him stab people in the face for no reason at all. Just, I, don't know. I wasn't rooting for him at all. So. If if Mark from Slowly Red is watching this, he's gonna be so stressed. With <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, Mark Lawrence used to reply to me on Twitter until I didn't like Broken Empire. Now. <laughs> I'm not saying that's a thing. I know he's busy. I'm just saying I, I see him respond to everybody all the time except me. So <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe he heard my thoughts on Broken Empire. Okay. But it's I weird. am reading Book of the Ancestor and I, and I hope to like it. I feel like I want to give Book 2 a try because I feel maybe he'll actually explain how come he's like 13 years old or whatever and, and how all that makes sense. Maybe there's a good explanation. I just didn't get it in the book one, in the first book. So. But then should I pick it up or not? I'm kind of like... <laughs> news right now it's like uh, yeah let's give it a try but i no. mean i feel like i'm alone on an island here it seems like everybody except me like i mean you like just really i mean like to the point of nihilism dark yeah sure i think you probably like it mm -hmm. a lot but uh if if you're if you think something like first law was too dark probably not probably mm -hmm. not no. it, yeah it's not too long the first book it's like 300 pages and not too much not too many words on each page so 
Yeah, see, Thiago, the thing was is like, look how look how effed up this kid is. Has a, I don't feel like I got a satisfying explanation. He's just effed up. He, he was like, oh, this is why he's so effed up. Okay, so he's fixed that now. Why is he still doing effed up things? Yeah, so <laughs> I don't, I don't want to get too much in case people haven't gotten too far into it. No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. not. No, and I, I do also understand ah. some aspects why people love it. Um, sure, sure, it, I, it didn't I, work that it, well for me. Maybe it's like Malazan. I know why people consider it the best fantasy they've ever read, and I see also why people nope out on it. I, I completely can see both sides of it in that regard. Did so. you ever, ever finish it? Did you get to the Cripple No, I, I do actually have uh, Toll the Hounds back on the schedule this year, though, so I'm going to get oh, back right. to it. I'm just like, is that I, need a good, I need a good year-long break is what I said, <laughs> at least a year, and that, that upset a lot of people, and I was like, where's the fire? What's the race? Why do I have to finish it immediately? You know, I mean, everyone – that reads this series besides Patrick takes like three years to read it. Why do I have to read it in, you know, 10 straight mm. months to enjoy <laughs> it? So I didn't feel bad about taking a break and everybody just assumed that meant I was just quitting it. And I was like, yeah, I made a video recently guys about series. I quit. I'm not scared of Malazan fans. I'll tell them I'm quitting. If I'm quitting, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, was like, I took a yeah, six month break in wheel of time and I finished it, you know? So it's, I don't know. I think it's a, it's a series that you, you need breaks. And I was trying mm. to do that read along. And it, it, it kind of burned me out a little bit. And I felt like if I forced after Reaper scale, I said, if I, I feel like if I forced told the hounds, which is just as plotting, let's put it that way. I was like, I, I'm just going to end up hate reading the end. And I don't want to do, I've, I've put five, 6,000 pages of work into this. I don't want to feel yeah. like I'm hate reading the ending, you know? So I was like a break and I'll be good. And plus I have Philip to, you know, cheerlead me on and tell me about why it's the most amazing thing ever. And so I, I feel like I have that, by the way, Published author or, or debut author on the chat. Soon. Ooh, soon. 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 Oh, very, very soon. My review is coming out in half an hour. So. It's going to be the last. <laughs> oh, wow. I will be last. So I'll make sure that it actually that it actually is good when I do review it. It's going to be, it's gonna be great. It's, be good. it's a great book, though. It's a good book. I liked it. I, liked it. Mm. Also, I just yeah, hope I'm uh, saying Dan correctly and it's not like Aiden or Idosh or, or something Idosh. weird that I'm, I'm saying. Says, you know, he's a linguist. He's Hopefully, I'm saying it right. I say just Eden. <laughs> Eden, Eden, Eden. Yeah. I, I'm saying Eden, but we'll, we'll see. I will see. You know, Philip. Really, That's the thing about Philip is he will never correct you. He'll just he'll just say it correctly when he says it. That's what I love about yeah. him. Yes, <laughs> yes that is very true. But Mike, would you consider Malassan in your as a favorite series at the moment? I probably would put it in a top ten. Okay. For me, but it's definitely top 20 and just for the fact that it's so ambitious and there's nothing else like it. I mean, it's one yeah. of those things where I say all the time where I feel like a fantasy author is playing it safe or they're just repeating something that they love. Never once do I look at Malazan and be like, oh, yeah, this is just like this book. Never, uh, yeah. never. It's so unique. And I credit him so much for just going for it because so few authors will do that. And I, I get why it doesn't work for everybody. And it's really to me, it's 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 taking a bet on yourself and saying, you know what, people really like these characters. I'm going to write a, the next book completely new yeah. characters. Yeah, <laughs> I think that takes so much balls to do that, and he he gets away with it what five or six times in the series. Yeah, so, yeah. That, I was reading. I'm well. I'm reading that escape now, and I was thinking, imagine being the person that needs to, has to edit Malassan. <laughs> that means you <laughs> have to assume, understand. I'm just assuming those he's talking about. about. Yeah. <laughs> You guys agree that you need to be like in a certain headspace and yeah. to read it like calmly because I've been wanting to read it like for ages now, but I'm always like, well, I don't have like a lot of time. Let's do it this on a holiday. And I always push it. So do you guys agree with that? I agree. It's coming closer to me. But... It's a huge commitment. And it's, it's the most difficult yeah. book I've ever read, a series I've it's ever like, read by far. It is. I don't think it's an insult to say that Malazan is work. You you have to put some work into it. it. Work. It's, 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 like yeah. taking a, it's like taking a college course. You got to actually pay attention. Like, so, so many people are like, oh, don't worry if you don't understand everything. That's true, but yeah, there are things that will come back up. You'll be like, what? I don't even know what you're talking about. So don't be scared to yeah. take notes, guys. I tell people all the time, mm -hmm. there's nothing embarrassing about taking notes. Make a spreadsheet mm -hmm. with names and locations just do or it. Or you can share yours if you already have it. <laughs> yeah, I, I might still. I don't know. I don't know. I like I did that really, really good spreadsheet when I was doing Wheel of Time because Patrick, who's going through it right now, could probably attest. There's so many names that are similar. Especially every Ice and uh, name is the damn same thing. <laughs> I, I, cannot, I, cannot I cannot differentiate the Ice and now, right? 
they're all just angry all the time and there are so many of them <laughs> right and, and here's the thing when i when i got to about book six of wheel of time i said you know what if i don't hear this character's name three or four times in one ear and out the other he'll let me know if they're important later so yeah <laughs> yeah that's my thought but I think Mike, you said, well, this was a long time ago, but you said like real time is like taking a master's degree in fantasy while Malassan is like the PhD of fantasy. Oh, actually, doctor for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It might actually be like after your doctor and you get your job as a rocket scientist. Yes. That, that might <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's, again, people think that's an insult. I never think that it's mm. an insult. I, I'll just recommend, and this is coming from me, guys, someone who does an audiobook, do it eyes only, or you're going to be so freaking confused. Mm. I mean, even with ice yeah. only, you're gonna be because there's so many names and locations and dream sequences and visions and stuff. You're not gonna have any idea if you don't have those pauses between the paragraphs in the book. <laughs> so, uh, that was a mistake I did with Gardens of the Moon. I was like, I'm gonna read the physical, but if I'm on a walk, I'm gonna listen on audiobook. But mm -hmm. that was one of the worst mistakes I made. So I had to stop listening to it. Because... Where do you guys stand on audiobooking? Like, like how, like what percentage would you say you audiobook versus physical read? Uh, zero, zero yeah. for me. <laughs> I, I can't do it. I tried and tried and tried, and still it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I tried doing something simple like Dresden files, and I was like, I don't know what just happened the last thirty minutes, and had to it. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna read it. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, with audiobooks, I started at like one point two, and I've been listening quite a lot of audiobooks in the past two years, so I've been able to increase the speed. But it depends on the author. For example, if I'm listening to um, a Robin Hobb book. I can actually listen at two point speed because she says the same thing. <laughs> yeah, like, she's describing the snow again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But other books, I'll have to slow it way down. Um, so it just depends on us, us person, the story. Yeah, but, but like, I mean, like, say, of all the things that you read, how much, how much of reading do you do via audio versus physical? It's probably do like sixty physical and forty audio. I'm guessing. Yeah, a lot of a lot of. I think. Uh, so, uh, ball booktuber scott i think he, he he's he's declared that immersive reading is where he'll do both mm. I, I there's these people i've learned that apparently will listen to the audiobook and they'll read at the same time i'm just like yeah i, don't I know did it for a while and it's actually kind of like one tip if you want to read faster and because of course like you are with a lot of your senses super into the story and you cannot be distracted right because you cannot like even think which sometimes is not that good but i do feel and if you're listening and read at the same time, you read faster and it's way more immersive. At least I've just read one book like that and oh. I enjoyed it. But it's it was, again, like the conclusion of a trilogy. So I already had like the whole world building, everything already sorted out. I didn't need that much time to, you know, relax. And, um, what is this? What is that? But for me, I'd say that is 50-50, I guess, right now with audiobooks. And I started like two years ago. Like, and it was the weirdest experience at the beginning. I started with Ninth Rain, which I'm not sure if it is a good book to uh, read on audio. Is that the Jen Williams? Yes. I have book yeah. one. I don't know either. I did that one on audio and yeah. then I, I didn't work for me. And then I picked up on physical and loved it. So, you know why, you know why I got that book? Because the covers are awesome. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. I will feel cover. <laughs> awesome. Am I the only one who cover buys? I mean, come on. Oh, I always name. cover buy. Yeah. <laughs> the whole reason I did Red Rising was for the covers. Mm -hmm. Not a lot. And recommendation, but yeah. And now it's you know one of my favorite series of all time. You know, so okay. it works out sometimes, and then you have other ones where it's like, eh, yeah. So too bad your inside <laughs> be as good as your outside. Uh, I, with uh with Krupp's voice on the audiobook, Chago, I only know Alan's impersonation of it, and it's hilarious. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, I actually, actually listened to it. Actually, it. It actually kind of makes me like the character more than I actually mm -hmm. liked him in the book. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's yeah, Scott. See, immersive reading, something I've declared, existed before I ever used the term. Well, you're the first one I heard it from, so I'm going to give you credit, my friend. <laughs> Subscribe mm. to Scott, guys. He has great, great ideas. And he's a huge Song of Ice and Fire fan like me. Ooh. Mm. <clears throat> Have you seen the potential leaked new book cover? Uh, oh, I don't oh. think I don't, I don't think that is true. <laughs> of what Win the Winner? I, I never yeah. I never trust anything about Win Not the Winner. When, yeah. when George puts it on his blog, I'll believe it until then. Yeah. Same. But I want it to be true. You yeah, know, oh, I mean I always want it yes, to be true. I'm like, yes, this is the time. And it's never the time. But it's like, yeah. 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 And that's the thing, is like a lot of us, you know, we 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 clown George for taking so long to read and all that stuff. Or take so long, I'm sorry, so long to write. But when's a winter has a release date? I'm scheduling a vacation around that date. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Still. 
people are like, with- oh, I mean, I just don't even care anymore. I'm like, yeah, I'll say that. But the second it has a release date, you better believe it's going to take over my life. And kids yeah. need to eat. Get, 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 help yourself. You know, just oh, wow. raid the pantry. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, winter is here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he's working on book seven as well? And then he'll like have like back to back release. I, I don't releases. pretend to know. I've had so many theories about George over the years. Oh, he's just waiting for the show. Oh, he's waiting for the show to finish. And all that. Now I'm just like, George is just a, a, a different animal. It, you know, like I said, the second he releases anything, even if it's just a chapter written on a napkin, I'm going to read it. You know. So. And have you guys read anything else? by george i'm reading fever dream for the first time in april the first time i've stepped outside of the world of ice and fire of his so i'm reading that one i hate i haven't i haven't read anything i've only read two books of ice on the fires of fire there you go i mean you like them though no that is only because i read them way back before i got into fantasy and it was i was way too overwhelmed with the complexity and then i stopped and then i got back into reading and Library of Vikings stuff happened, so I will give it a go. But the fact that it's unfinished is just I keep pushing it back for that yeah. reason. But I will read it definitely someday. I'll pick it up from book one. Yeah, I'm not too interested in the wild card stuff, which I tell apparently it's just him like co-authoring or editing stuff. But for me, it's just uh, you know you get attached to an author in in one world. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, it you you like okay, I love this author. But what if it's like Joe Abercrombie, where I love First Law, but then I read the the Shattered Season, I'm like. <laughs> you know, so I, it, it's it's one of those things. I think you just might be a little bit scared. You know, yeah. what if it's not, or what if I'm just going to be unfair to them and I'm going to compare it to this other thing the whole time? And I, I, that's why I've always been afraid with with George, who's one of my yeah. favorite authors ever. How am I going to feel if I pick up another book by him and I think it's crap? You know, I'm going to feel yeah. a little bit. Of that. Or yeah. if I just can't stop comparing it. To, well, he wouldn't have done this in Song of Ice and Fire. You know, I, yeah, we're guilty of that. I, I think sometimes. I happen to like Favorite Dream as well, but. I don't know, I picked it up like a long time ago before Song of Ice and Fire. So I wouldn't know if comparing it now would stand the same way, you know? Well, I'm so. a big Anne Rice fan, so I love, uh, you know, Southern vampire stuff. That sounds yeah. like a lot of fun. Yeah. Me, so sure, sure. Like Hopefully. Mm. Someone asked a question. Oh, do you guys read uh, Scott Lynch? Oh, yeah, I, I do. I, okay. I read read Lies of the Glamora. It's Same. one of my favorite books now. I, I know me and me, me and Murphy bang heads about this one all the time. Is that I didn't hate the book. I just don't understand why everybody else thinks it's amazing. Same with Name of the Wind. I don't I don't understand why everybody thinks it's amazing. Why it's Same. amazing. And Patrick's like, I gotta go, guys. But I <laughs> <laughs> the thing Time's is, up. Goodbye. <laughs> is, is a lot of people clown Roth us and they yeah. clown George, but they never talk about Scott Lynch. <laughs> and apparently I know he's had some some issues some personal issues in real life and, and, and i understand that but here's the thing also is i hear everybody say lies a lot more amazing one of the 10 best one of the 10 best fantasy books i've ever read it is and then <laughs> like, I'm like so what about books two and three they're like eh. so they didn't, <laughs> i haven't read hear as much yet. about what thorn of ember lane i think and i think that's why you don't hear as much about that but if i recall correctly didn't scott lynch turn in the manuscript it's like two years ago yeah 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 three i think three years now yeah. So I want to blame lockdown, but I'm just like, you think he'd had more time to edit during lockdown, <laughs> you know? So what's the deal with that? What's going on? I think uh, the thing with uh, Scott Lynch is that he has a difficult time in editing the book. That's for sure. Now, I mean, it's been three years, but right now he has mentioned that he will release three novellas as kind of like a sequel to the third book, Republic of Thieves, and that that three novellas will lead to the fourth book, Thorn of Emberlin. And also, I must say that probably this is my my assumption anyway, uh, Scott Lynch didn't get that much click because he has always been upfront about this, well, his issues since the beginning of the delay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that's not the same with Rothfuss or George mm-hmm. Martin because I think mm-hmm. uh, George Martin has always said, this book will come out next year, yeah. this book will come out next year, this book yeah. will come out next year, and then it's 11 years now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so I think it's kind of different here. Yeah. And then Rothfuss, he's, like, he's almost like worse at this oh, point. Well, I think yeah, Roth yeah. is just so unlikable because he's just so rude to everybody who even brings up. I mean, he comes out, he's not even asking about the booking boards. Be like, hey, I really, really loved King Killer. He's like, yeah, good for fucking you. I'm like, dude, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> What's your problem? So, yeah. and, he, and he talked with, I think it was, a, he had a podcast with Jim Butcher. He was saying like, you know, Jim Butcher was saying he was at a convention and the new book just came out and he was signing and people were like, I don't like to be that guy, but when's the next one? And I was like, I, I get that. But I was like, Jim Butcher took, what, four years 
he didn't take 12 years. All right. So, I, mean, he wasn't, I, mean, I don't think he was ever rude to anybody about it. So I don't yeah. think it's, I think that's apples to oranges. Personally, yeah. But I don't know. I and did this, this thing where he like, didn't he say he was going to like read a chapter or release a chapter or something of Doors of Stone at this charity? And then, then he didn't do it. And it's been like a year now. And I, yeah. Yeah. Dick. Not cool. Yeah. Yeah. That, that one is not cool at all. It's, it's I, a bad look. Yeah. Disappointing. Very disappointing. Mm. Yeah. I just don't understand. How can you not have one chapter done? Yeah. After 11 years, right? That's what after I said. Years. If after 11 years, you still cannot release one chapter that you can eventually edit, then there's no hope for yeah. Joseph Stone. Well, we do remember <laughs> like three or, four years, three or four years ago, I think his publishers, his publishers came out and said, I haven't seen a word. And everybody crucified that woman as, as completely full of shit. Hmm. <laughs> Looks like she might have been telling the truth, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> It would just be better if you just said, actually, I'm not going to finish this trilogy or something. You think? Well, I mean, I think... yes for us, but for him? Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> I, I think the thing. fact that I didn't was like, not really even understand why everybody loves us so much. So it was easy for me to walk. So I was like, great, great. That's awesome. Because that and the Gentleman Bastards, I'm like, great. That's just two more series that I don't have to fret that they're never going to be finished. <laughs> like I have done with, with, with George since the year 2000. Mm. You know, so, um, there mm. we go. There we there go. go. <laughs> but you know what? That, that's something I get a lot. And Patrick, I don't think you do this because you you read most stuff uh, early. Mm -hmm. Is uh, some pushback on saying I don't want to read a series until it's finished. And I said I don't feel bad about that because I will buy the author's work. I'm supporting the author. I'm just not mm -hmm. reading it yet. Like I didn't. I waited until Greenbone was finished before I decided to read it. You know, there's several series I do that, but then there's other authors like Stormlight Archive where I'm reading it as it releases. You know, I, yeah. I don't think that that's just like something I say. I, I refuse to start a series that's finished. I look at the writer, mm. like Ryan Cahill. Look how mm. fast that guy writes. Uh, it's yeah. been two years and he just released three books, and the third book is what, 2,000 pages? Yeah, I'm not worried about <laughs> like, writing speed. So I'll, if, if, I feel like if it's an author who has a really great output, communicates with their audience really, really well, sure, I'll start a series before it's finished. No doubt. Yeah. yeah. I also have no issue with starting unfinished series because the way I look at this, if it's an epic fantasy, and most of the books that I'm reading are epic fantasy, and see, here's the thing with some some of my favorite epic fantasy series, uh, reading once isn't enough. Like some of us said, fire. A lot of people say I don't want to start it because it's unfinished. But here's the thing: you re uh, with some of us said, fire or the King Killer Chronicle or maybe like Stormlight Archive. Reading it once is not enough. I think you have to read it like plenty of times. As if you love the series and you will do that. And that's how I look at all, well, pretty much all unfinished series. And if I start to finish and that series sucks, well, that's good readings for me. So I don't need to continue. <laughs> I, I don't DNF books very often, but I'll, I'll quit a series. If it's if, if, if I read, I think Scott also pointed this out, like uh, when I was talking about Demon Cycle, about why I bounced on that. He was like, if each book you're liking less and less, <laughs> all the trend line, baby. <laughs> you know, so yeah. I was about a quarter of the way through book four of Demon Cycle. I was like, nope, he ain't going to turn this ship around. And I bounced. I wish I'd done that with Lightbringer earlier than I did. But, you know, <laughs> that's like my whipping boys there, Brent Weeks and, uh, and Peter B. Brett, just because I think they're both talented authors who just lost their way. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I don't mind starting unfinished series as long as I know there will be a story recap in book two. Oh, Otherwise, that would be amazing! I, yeah, be yeah. I'm with Patrick there, man. They've got to make they've got to make that the norm. They've got. I mean, I mean, even like, or even if they don't, look at what Richard Swan did with uh, with with Tyrion. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah, yeah. Put a recap of book one on his website. It's not hard to do this, but I'm like, a lot of people are reading uh, the what is the Ember Blade sequel book, the Shadow Casket. They were saying, yeah. I don't remember anything that happened. I read it five years ago, you know. So and, and there's no recap at the beginning of the book. I, I don't think. When I read that Lycanius, it's like, this is brilliant. Why doesn't everybody do this? Especially with Lycanius, because it helped me understand some things I didn't understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually yeah. binge read Lycanius, and I still read that recap. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. yeah I, I, and TV I, I wish he'd released for years. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, Patrick, I wish he'd released a recap of book three so he could clear some things up. <laughs> 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 okay, that's what, what, what were you saying? No, I'm just saying that TV shows have been have been doing recaps for like the episode beforehand for years, right. and that's only a week in between episodes. I'm yeah. like, how are you? it makes no sense, <laughs> yeah. man. But I would love to ask you guys. Well, I'm putting you on spot, but what is one of the best books you read this year so far? And you can have a think. I would say it has to be either The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu, which I loved, or Age of Sin by Daniel T. Jackson book two in the Ilborn saga. 
Have you oh, heard about Illborn, Mike? I have I read Bloodborne. Which one? Have you heard about Illborn? No. Ilborn. Daniel T. Jackson. Yeah. The only Daniel Jackson I know is from Stargate, so no. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Patrick, we love Illborn, don't we? I still it haven't is. read the sequel though. You you've read it, right? I have. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was just as good. I wouldn't say it's better, but it was just as good. Well, I'm be honest, brilliant. with a lot of Patrick's videos, if it's an author I haven't heard of, I'm like, ah, la, 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 la. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't. I can't have him bust my TBR more. So that, that, oh, it was that, so that, good. This, I mean, uh, book of the year for me so far, it's it's either We Are the Dead or Fool's Fate. I, I think both mm, of these books wow. have just been so damn good. And I was like, I don't understand how Mike Shackle isn't like, unless this third book like shits the bed. I have no idea why more fantasy readers aren't reading this guy. Especially people who are like into like Joe Abercrombie and Mark Lawrence. So I thought you were saying a fool's fate. A fool's no, no, no. I, mean, fool, I would put fool's Aaron up there though. A fool's Aaron was amazing. Yeah. yeah so, I, I so, many, Aaron. so many fools. <laughs> the thing was, I was reading Fool's Fate and A Fool's Hope at the same time. I was out there reading Golden Fool and Golden Sun at the same time. I'm like, wow, what's going on here? Yeah. So uh, I think for me, I think my favorite book of the year so far is uh, Of War and Ruin right now. The third book in Ryan K. Hill's book. Yeah, I love that one. Really love that one. Yeah, I also enjoyed it. It was just a bit too long for my taste, but I, I really enjoyed it. It yeah. was really good. For me, you, I'd say The Justice of Kings and Tyranny yeah. of Fate. I really, really loved it. It was actually like, yeah, really getting it hard reading all the stuff afterwards i was like no this is so cool i just love that <laughs> patrick is bad for your tbr says red fury <laughs> i would argue he's good but also can be very detrimental yes <laughs> i think thank you josh thank you josh <laughs> with tyranny of faith I, the only thing was i didn't like that little romance subplot it completely mm. was like i don't who asked for this and when i talk to richard i'm going to i'm going to ask him about it he's going to make me feel like a complete ass hat i'm sure but he's such a gentleman i can't i can't wait to talk to him about it even if he looks like a harkonnen you know <laughs> <laughs> harkonnen <laughs> you have it interviewed right i'm sorry i thought johan you had it interviewed right yeah yeah i recently interviewed him yeah yeah, we talked about uh, just having them come on the channel, just kind of BS, because it seems like when uh, when I have an author on, if we just talk about just their book, yeah, not as fun. Because when I had Jay Kristoff on, we just talked about whatever, and it was a blast. So yeah, I think maybe I might kind of kind of move to that format. Except uh, I am supposed to be having an Ra Salvatore on pretty soon. That one's going to be oh, like wow. try to oh, wow. be professional because that, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's that's really like, cool. I was like regardless if you've read his stuff or not or care for his stuff, I was like that's like fantasy royalty, man. That's that's yeah, that's that you got to yeah. take seriously. That guy's. He's put out more books than, I, than I've been alive, you know. So it's, <laughs> yeah, he's he's awesome. So I can't wait to talk to him. Man. Hopefully, I Stephen King will come on your channel someday. I don't think Stephen <laughs> even knows how the internet works. He's got Twitter on his phone, so. and then he does snail mail. I think. I think he. Probably <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how that would go over. Patrick, who's the who's your who's your favorite author that you've interviewed, either print or in or in, or on the or in, on the channel? Uh in favorite author. I must say, Joe Abercrombie is fun. Uh, Fondali is also great. I really like talking to Fondali. But yeah, she's uh, nice. Really, I like talking to authors. I think it's really uh, most of the authors I talk uh, talk with, they're all pretty great. It's mm. always fun to take a look at the behind the scene of some books and also mm. the process, influence, and all that. Unfortunately, interview is probably the worst videos on my channel. Yeah, <laughs> as far yeah, yeah so as true. far as performance goes. Yeah, coolest author I interviewed, Jay Kristoff. Like I said, if, even if you don't like his books, that 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 is the kind of guy you could just go to the bar and just kick it with. He's mm. really really cool. Like we talked like thirty minutes before and an hour after, and we did the interview for like two hours. So I was like, geez, you know. But it, it, really 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 cool guy. But uh, how many have you interviewed so far, Yohan? Like yeah, five. I do it primarily for my Patreon. So just because also. I mean, those are very short. They're like 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's not like two, three hours. Um, but yes, yeah, as, as Patrick mentioned, like long form content generally tends to do really, really badly. Yeah, that's why I created the uh, the podcast now. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to, after, a, you know, that's a great idea. Shelf Life runs out. I'm just going to put them on the podcast and take them off the channel. Yeah. It, I have well. had one with Ryan Cahill, which did quite well, but that was because I we talked about how to be a successful self-published author basically yeah. and that was the title of the interview yeah. and that did quite well that guy's I cracked if code, I, huh yeah i mean if you if you title it interview with ryan cahill you'll probably get like 10 less 10 times less views right um, <laughs> but the, the focus was 
self-publishing. Um, mm. So no, that guy's definitely like cracked some kind of code or something. Cause like, like someone was asking me like, well, he seems pretty popular now. Is, is, is he like, has he actually gotten published? I was like, I don't think he wants to. I think, I think mm. he's having plenty of success doing this his own way. Yeah. Yeah. No. But he's basically, I mean, the books are great and he is great and he's working really, really hard, but he mm. also thinks about publishing as business, like what, what does work, what doesn't work. And he studies everything. So it's not only luck, really, even though the books are great. Um, he's really done a lot of research on to, into how to make a good book and how to sell books and stuff like that. Hey, Ryan, thanks for the question. If I knew the answer to when George was going to release the next Out Song of Ice and Fire book, you better believe I'd be in the betting market. and be <laughs> uh, Just not soon enough, my man. I wish I wish we knew. I, 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 nothing I would love more than to to have that book in my hands. If anything, just so, to, to wash away the, the memory of what they did on the show, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good times. <laughs> good times? <laughs> so have, you, have you guys... You guys, I, I get this question a lot. I have no interest in writing my own book. You guys have any interest in writing? I I might be one day, but yeah, not not anytime soon. <laughs> I could imagine you you would write a progression fantasy. Nah, nah. nah, nah. <laughs> oh yeah, let's talk about Cradle. I don't care. <laughs> no, no, don't get me started. And I know everybody says, "Oh, you got to wait till you get to book three. but I'm like. Does it still do this, this, and this? I'm like, yeah. I was like, yeah. all right, see you later. <laughs> I mean, the books are short, and I do get maybe book three is amazing, but I just didn't like book two at all. So I, I just can't see myself enjoying book three at this point. Mm. Um, it, it's just definitely not for me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't enjoy it. Well, like I said, I enjoy playing, you know, RPGs where you grind for experience points and stuff. Mm. But I don't want to read about it. Mm, that's that, that's it was book two. I think like Lyndon was a prisoner and his friends come to to to, to get him out. And he's like, get me out of here. And like, oh wait, no, you should beat this monster so you advance to the next level. <laughs> what the hell am I reading right now? <laughs> that, 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 that was finally yeah. I was like, yeah, it's probably, it's probably <laughs> my style. I'm you know character oriented, you know, and I, I love a good plot. Yeah. But I mean I understand look. People love it. I mean, it's a yeah, humongous yeah, fan. And, and and when I brought that up, when I said that Ryan was basically like the king of self pub, he's like, I think that uh, I think he's got me beat. Like, what's the author's name of Cradle? Will White. Will, Will White. White. Yeah, I think Will White's got me beat. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. Doing pretty well no, he's sold millions of books. That guy. Will White is immensely success successful. And super he's, nice. He actually yeah. even messaged me after I quit and said, "Thank you for thanks, thanks for giving him a try, man." I mean, it's, it's really nice. It's really oh. nice. That's nice. really cool guy. And that did piss me off because maybe we just want to go back and read them now. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I, like my kryptonite is when the author is really, really nice and talks to me. It's like, oh, the, 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 you know, they're talking to us peasants now. You know, so. oh, no. Yeah. See, see, I'm not I'm not alone. So it's, it's like people either love it or they or it's just it's just not for yeah. them. And a lot of people told me that it was because I'm not into anime. And I'm like, well, you know, that's that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, I'm not in manga. I'm like, I don't know. When I was reading Berserk, I was never like, well, I sure do hope Guts gets to the next level, this issue. You know, so. <laughs> no, nah, well, Guts, Guts doesn't level up. <laughs> Guts, Guts <laughs> is the level. He is all of the levels, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, Patrick, you read all of them, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, does I... it just. It does just does it end that he's just so extremely powerful that no one can beat him or whatever? Well, I mean, it, has, just, well, it just seems to be the thing that will happen eventually, right? Or yeah, he's he's at this stage right now. I mean, the entire point of progression fantasy is to get stronger and stronger with each book. Yeah. So yeah, eventually, with I think all progression fantasy, the main character will become super strong by the end. Yeah, and well, I guess. Uh, I and I guess I get you from. Sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my unpopular opinion is that book eleven is so well loved by so many people, but it's not for me. I actually think it's one of the weakest book of the entire series. But I think Cradle fans will actually kill me for that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's my opinion. I guess that's a good way to get around the problem that uh, I have uh, already in the Drift books. I'm in book seven of the Drift books. I'm already like, this party's so op, they're never going to lose a fight. You know, like, uh, yeah, how are you going to just keep creating stronger and stronger villains? I, I, I'm not really sure there's a way. So I guess the progression thing is a good way to get around that. There's always someone stronger until you reach the top, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> that is one thing with Malassan so far. It feels like anyone can die at any point So in this world. So. Uh, no comment. I'll talk to you yeah, after, yeah, yeah. after yeah, like book four or so. Yeah, we'll talk yeah. if you get that far. <laughs> okay. 
Well, mm. Malazan is kind of tricky. I think I read Malazan, I think, in three three months, and I think that is impressive. <laughs> I don't think I can do that now. Say three months. <laughs> like yeah, three months. Did you work? How many months? I did. I, did. <laughs> <laughs> I finished Malazan in three months, and I took a break only about three times uh, between books. Yeah, it it was quite a pinch. I was so in the mood for Malazan back then, but now I don't think I can do that. It's the other way around with the Wheel of Time. I finished uh, Shadow Rising and I took a break from it like two years. <laughs> yeah. I remember reading his review for Shadow Rising and be like, wow, I'm surprised he hasn't been kicked off the internet yet. <laughs> Ooh, I, I, got so, <laughs> so, yeah. I got so many hates for that. <laughs> no. Hey, that's a good conversation. What What do you think is your probably your most unpopular opinion? Mine's very well known. It's Name of the Wind. What What are some of you guys most unpopularly received uh, either opinions or videos? Uh, not mm. not on videos, I think for me, but or your reviews, yeah. Mine definitely Shadow Rising is one. Uh, the, uh, the Fall of Babel is kind of mixed. The Fall of Babel. By Man, people either Babel. love or hate that book. I have no yeah. idea. What I just started that series. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Are you talking Babel the... by R.F. Kwong or the or the? No, no, Just... Ascendant Ascent. Okay. But I also read Babel, as we say it here in the UK. Oh, is that is it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was on with Moid from Media Death Cult, and he told me I was saying everything wrong, and I was like, "Sorry, I'll just you know add more U's to my language, I guess." <laughs> Moid's great. I suppose I'm not, I'm not sure if it's unpopular opinions, but I didn't enjoy the Last Wish um, in the Witcher series. Oh, and I, I really loved know. loved book seven in the Dark Tower series. So, uh, wow, that is something. All right. <laughs> <laughs> do you have one, Isa, or do you just love everything? No, I'd say I don't like Name of the Wind. I mean, no. I don't think it is for uh, you. Yeah, no, Mike's happy. <laughs> I mean, I don't want. No, I want people to love things. I what yeah, I even yeah. said in that video was like, I just don't get it. I and people will tell you, oh, you just didn't understand it. I will tell you to your face. No, I guess I just didn't get it. I just didn't <laughs> get it. I don't understand why people love it so much. But I, I, I believe that a lot of people that you know came up reading Harry Potter that was like their first step into real actual epic fantasy. At least that's what I feel like. So it, you know, it's maybe be some nostalgia to them or something. That's the only thing I can figure because I have no mm-hmm. idea why everybody loves it so much. No idea. Yeah. Agreed. Ooh, another one. I don't. I don't hate this book, but I don't understand the hype for the Prior of the Orange Tree by Samantha uh, Shannon. Yeah, I got about 150 pages in. I was like, ah, this ain't for me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I'll read the people, and I look forward to it. But yeah. I liked it fine, but I, I think like it had something right. Like the descriptions were beautiful. I think the yeah. setting was phenomenal. But yeah. at the same time, I like the characters. They suffered. A lot of stuff happened to them, and it was like no idea who you are, right? Like I didn't feel that connected to them, but mm. I, yeah, I enjoyed it. Mm. I'm thrilled for the new book. I'm not sure if you guys have already read it. No, I, I, I received an arc, a physical arc, like five months ago, and I haven't picked it up. I feel yeah. quite bad about it. Yeah, that, that's something I feel bad about is when I complain I can't get arcs, and then I get one, I don't have time to read it. Like I got, like, <laughs> the new, the new, I got the new Rockio like six months early, and didn't get, and didn't get a chance to read it until yeah. like close to release yeah. date. So. The way I justify this one is that she's become a bestseller already with this new book. I mean, she's fine without me. Um, yeah, yeah. She's I mean, sold hundreds yeah. of thousands of copies already. I'm sure. Who is this? Samantha, Samantha Shannon. Shannon. Oh, okay. It, she's got really, really pretty covers. Really yeah, pretty covers yeah, are beautiful. Don't that's uh, oh, she, no. she used to go by S A, right? S A. That's her. That's her. That did the the City of Gold or whatever book. Chak- oh, that's no, City- that's Chakraborty. Chakraborty. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. They have similar looking covers. I think that's what I'm mm. thinking. Yeah. That, I did get her books just for the covers, and I haven't read anything by her yet. Jocker Bordy. Yeah, it's mm. the same cover artist, so yeah. Yeah. Mm, you so can that, tell. that person has found their calling. They're very, very good. They're very, mm-hmm. very yeah. good. I think it's cheat code a little bit, putting like a little bit like that reflective foil on the cover. It's just, it's just. Yeah, so they're so hard to resist. <laughs> yeah. Very, very hard. I actually bought a, a Day of Fallen Night already. That's the second book by Samantha Shannon without reading Priory of the Orange Tree. <laughs> It's fine, yeah. right? It's a prequel, so. Yeah. Patrick, look at this comment. <gasps> oh wait, Shadow of Bone. I was thinking of Bone. Oh, <laughs> no, you're right. Shadow of Bone. Never mind. Never mind. I, I read the first two Shadow of Bone books, and rem- shocker, it wasn't for me. And I knew that going in. It was one of those things where I said, "Hey, I'm going to watch a TV series because I believed in the showrunner." Yeah. And I said, "Uh, you know, maybe, maybe." 
I'll just give the books a try. So I know, and yeah, no, it's, it's everything that I can't stand about why, but I knew that going in. And I'm not going to dunk on it. Cause I know, I know it wasn't written for a 42 year old man. I know that it was not written for me. I get that. I get that. But yeah, it's, I think though that Six of Crows, it's very good. Like that's, I, that's what I've heard. And the thing is, on the show, is I love the Six of Crows characters. Yes. So I was like, everybody. That's why I was asking. Is this? Is, did she get better? Is basically what I was asking. And I don't yeah. ever dunk on an author's writing style. I would say that mm-hmm. YA fantasy. One of my problems is I feel like they have great, great ideas, but their methods aren't quite exactly what I'm looking for personally. Yeah. And so I was like, did, did she be, improve her writing? And everybody says the six of crows is very much like a, like a misborn level of, yeah. of fantasy, I think. And that, that's something that could be interesting. Cause I don't look at Brandon Sanderson and say, Oh God, this stuff's so grown up. You know, I don't ever say that. <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I don't think everything has to be super grown up for me or yeah. whatever, but you know, if we're, if the world isn't ending and we're fighting about which two boys I get to choose from, that would be something I'd be, you know, <laughs> you know. Although Ben Barnes, I get it. It's a handsome yeah. man. But Six of Crows leans way more mature. And I, there's actually like a lot of different young adult books that leans more mature that, that are perfect for adult readers mm. or, you know, more matured at least. And I think Six of Crows really is a good blend if you want to get there. So Ryan says he's working on six draft of his novel and he gave Rothfuss a break if this was his first book. The name mm. of the one was overrated. Well, I mean... That, I can't say anything about the, uh, the the uh, the writing process. <laughs> good luck, good luck with that. But I, yeah, I think that you get you get some goodwill. I think after a while, and then after it gets to, wow, I've been waiting for this longer than my parents were waiting for that Beach Boys album. It's like it's, <laughs> it's been a long time. You know, it's the point where when you're having an anniversary edition of the last yeah. book you wrote, that's yeah. wow, that's something. <laughs> that's something. Oh man, that's so true. Elliot says, on popular opinion, the justice of Kings is just good. Mm-hmm. I didn't really feel the same level of excitement that everyone else did. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. There's lots of books like that. I mean, there's plenty yeah. of books that come out that people are like, that slaps. It's so good. And I read it. <laughs> like, it's all right, I guess. Yeah. Do you think that do you think that affects you ever as a reviewer, Patrick, where you feel like everyone says this is amazing and you kind of set your bar up really high and then you read uh, it and you think it's just okay and you're like uh, I think I think it definitely plays a part and I'm kind of, well, I must say that I'm a bit sad because sometimes I'm responsible for doing this <laughs> to, because I get hype over some books and, but that's the thing. I went in without any expectation and that matters a lot, a lot more than you think. Yeah. If I didn't went in with that high of an expectation, I think Shadow Rising would have worked much better for me. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, expectations mm. can definitely be something. I, mean, I was sold that Name of the Wind was the greatest fantasy book since The Fellowship of the Ring. I'm like, shit, okay, yeah. let's do this. Oh, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> wow. His writing style is so pretty. Like, I could listen to Patrick Rothfuss describe grass to me. I'm like, well, good, because he fucking does that a lot. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, that's, that's kind of the, the kind of thing I have about Hob. I just feel like Hob actually writes characters I really like, though. Mm. And I just never liked both. I never liked them. <laughs> at all and i heard it only gets worse with him in book two so yeah yeah i mean when it comes to book and sharing opinions like sure i'm gonna be honest about my opinions i don't care like whenever and i post I controversial, that. yeah whenever i post a controversial video i usually lose like 10 subscribers initially but like over time i'll usually gain all those back and more i mean it's more important oh, that i'm being honest I, I look at the analytics sometimes in my review of Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson, and I think I it, it was at like negative fifty subscribers last time I looked. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like, really? I was like, I didn't think I like eviscerated. I just said it's, it's by far my least favorite uh, Stormlight book yet. It, it's it's well. so weird because the book community is the most ho- wholesome and uh, like welcoming community I've ever been in. But then you have some people that are just I, strange. I, I said, just when, yeah. when I was reading Wheel of Time and I was doing these videos, I mean, every video was like a celebration. Really, they love to see new people reading the series. I mean, mm-hmm. you're probably experiencing this right now, Patrick. They love it. They love seeing people experience it until you start criticizing it. And yeah. the thing is, is when you start real time, every single one I would tell you, it's really great, but books seven through 10 are really, really tough. They're really, really tough. And, and yet, when you tough. get to book seven through 10 and you have criticism, they fly off the handle. They can't. Handle it. <laughs> so everyone loved those videos I was making while I was making them until I got to book number 11, I think. And I just went off on how I couldn't stand Egwene. 
And all mm. of a sudden, I was the worst. I was toxic. This was not the series for me. And I was like, what the hell? So, <laughs> you know, I, appreciate that. I always appreciate people who are going to be honest, even if you know. If it's if, if you're being honest, you're not like, oh, I'm just going to have this contrarian opinion to get it. I mean, if Absolutely. you're being honest that you don't like something that's probably pretty popular, it's, it's dangerous. But I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the honesty. And that's why I always say I'm always going to be honest in these things, even if. You hate it. I'm never doing it to get attention. Guys, if I wanted to do videos to get clicks, I know what kind of videos I would do. And they Same. wouldn't, they wouldn't be, oh, <laughs> I didn't really like this Brandon Sanderson book. That's that's suicide. If you want to do clicks, guys. So, yeah. well, that's very true. But I loved when you did those real-time videos. I was like two books behind you when you read them. That was way before I started my booktube channel. And literally, it was one of my favorite things. When I finished my book, I would make myself a cup of tea and watch your half-hour video talking about the well, book. thank you i had a great time doing that i can never do it again the whole like because i i felt like i tried to do that with malazan and it was hard and i was like i feel like all i'm doing is taking notes because i'm gonna uh, i did with dresden yeah. files do the spoiler the spoiler reviews because it's like if you felt like if you left out one thing people well, i can't believe you didn't bring this up i'm like well motherfucker i'm not the cliff notes i'm just <laughs> yeah, things yeah. that stuck out to me but, but but yeah it's uh i'm glad people still find those even if i am like god I hate the people's first experience of the channels back when like I was recording from like a Nokia phone, basically. <laughs> and like the audio doesn't even match my lips. And it's just, it's, it's so rough, but I don't know. I don't know. Most of you guys started when you had really good camera quality and sound. I, I used my not. phone and a $20 uh, mic initially. So yeah, same. <laughs> I had the good audio equipment because I podcasted, but yeah, I just had a, I had 10,000 subscribers before I actually upgraded my camera. I, I, I well, emailed Murphy and I was like, please help me. I have no idea what to do <laughs> you know, with the camera. Cause I was like, I don't, all these cameras are expensive and over my head on what they do. I have no idea. I like to plug and go, you know, plug it in the USB. We're good to go. Yeah. Mm. But it was the point where I was like, I probably need to, I can justify upgrading my equipment at this point. Mm. So. I, I think you told you said something about this, Mike, about uh, comments back then. This was when I only started my booktube channel, and you mentioned something like once you went past the ten thousand subscribers mark, I think that's when negative comments will start to pour in. Yeah. The bigger <laughs> your you're, channel gets, mm -hmm. you're right. You're absolutely right about that. <laughs> mm. And they're and they're so and I'm not saying that you know, hey, you're not allowed to be critical because I'm not perfect. I do stuff that's stupid in videos sometimes. Sure, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot. Uh, but but yeah, you'll get some just ridiculous over the over the top comments, and especially if you know you don't feel exactly the same way as someone. But yeah, the bigger your your audience, when you're, your first like five thousand, almost oh, every positive. comment is positive. It's, it's like amazing. <laughs> like this is my calling. These are the nicest people in the world. Yeah. And yeah, you, you'll get through some. Like what I get the yeah. other day, oh, I can't believe that you didn't like this book, but you like Stephen King. Pff, tells me I need to know about you. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, you know. Um, it yes, so. it's just going to get better and better for you guys. Just, just, just wait. Mm. I, I look forward to it. But whenever people <laughs> say like I should be talking about this book or whatever, like I feel like I want to talk about it more. <laughs> oh my god! It just every, pisses me off when people say you what I can't read and love read. I can't believe you're talking about Lovecraft on your channel or or Harry Potter. I'm like, yeah, dude, like, I'm here to talk about books, man. You can take your stuff to Twitter. Right? I'm not. I'm not. I don't do that here, and people get mad mm. about. It. They did. Yeah, they yeah. Really, really angry about it. And I'm, just like, well, I'm yeah. always going to be about the books. That's what I said. I wanted to, while I learned business school, stay on brand, you know, and that's always what I'm going to do. If other people want to do it that way, that's great. I'm just, I'm just never going to be that person. But yeah, you get people just pissed off. You, you, you do any research about this author first? <laughs> no, I just heard the book was good and that's why I picked it up. Like, and I don't even have to read it sometimes. Sometimes it'll be a book that someone sent me for a mm. book haul, like a what, Mist of Avalon. Apparently that author was a very bad human being, but someone just sent me the book and I brought it up in a book haul and people flipped out about it. I can't believe you're talking about this book. I'm like, I don't do the research of every book that someone sends me before I say thank you in a video, you know? So, yeah. And how do you guys manage those negative toxic comments? Do you engage? I fill them with kindness. Thank you. I'm super nice to them. They have no idea because they want you, they want you to fight with them. And I'm just like, yeah. hey man, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for giving the channel a chance. And they're like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Do you ever receive comments like, "You are wrong on this point at this point. You made no sense," and so on. It's like like this huge paragraph, and then they will end with, "But great video. Keep it on." Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same method as I just talked about. Yeah, but maybe it was something really, really great. But hey, love your, love what you do. Love your stuff. Yes. Every video. <laughs> Good point. 
<laughs> yeah, I've had some ridiculous ones, and and I and I used to always post the most over the top ones on social media, but I got feedback that people didn't like me doing that, so I stopped doing it because I find them funny. But other people thought that I was like bullying. I'm like, well, I scratched their name out, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But people thought I was bullying, so I stopped doing that. I but, found them know, hilarious, to be honest. I, I don't know. Yeah, I find too. them. I find them so funny, and people are like, oh, don't let them get you down. Like, get me down. It's the biggest laugh I had all day. <laughs> <laughs> You don't put your face and your opinions out there on the internet without being able to laugh off some criticism, you know? And then there's some that I find completely constructive. There's lots of things that I, when I started the channel, I did wrong. Mm. I'm glad people gave me feedback on it. So I get a lot of, Hey, don't worry about this. Don't worry about views and don't worry about the algorithm and stuff. And it's like, well, look, I, I, I work in data and analytics. This is stuff I can't stop doing. Mm. And I, if you want me to talk about it less, I'll talk about it less, but it's not everything I'm ever going to, you know, stop paying attention to. You know, because I just it's just what I do for a living. It's it's like telling someone who doesn't like to, you know, someone who's a professional swimmer to stay out of the water. You know, it's it's just yeah. it's just hard to do. So that's and it's cool. really easy to say something like do not pay attention to the views, do not pay attention to the stats when you don't have a booktube channel. I mean, I do that too back then. Once I have a booktube channel, it's getting harder. It's getting harder to not yeah. pay attention to the stats. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, it, it, you know, and YouTube's so mean about it. If you go into YouTube's yeah. video, it's like, yeah, this video is doing really shitty. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, YouTube Studio. Yeah. My God, you are so bad. <laughs> you have like a really, you have a really good week. You have videos that are doing really, really well. And then you put out one that's moderately well. And it's still like, yeah, this one's like ten out of ten. This is, people yeah. aren't watching this as much as usual. It's like I had some really good ones. I had to talk about nothing with Murphy, which obviously was going to get a big audience. And then I put out that that Narnia video this week, and it was like. Yeah. I had like mm. 5,000 views. I'm happy with that. It's like, yeah, this video is performing really awful. You should try to see what you're doing wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And how do you guys feel about that? Like, I've always been curious about the impact that it has on mental health, mental health, right? Like, it's always, don't look at the numbers, but it's there. And analytics made it super easy for you to digest how well or how bad you're doing so I think working in it helped me you know be ready for it and things like that but yeah i won't lie and say something mean, i don't like comments get me down like ever uh ever i i think uh the only thing that bothers me sometimes is when uh, you know uh a book that people know i love and they'll have like a big group get together to discuss it no one asks yeah. me, <laughs> no one asks me you know, but outside no it's just just normal stuff for me i don't i, I don't let it bother me but I, I won't lie there will be some times where you spend a long time Mm. And, and, and you could probably attest to this. You spent a long time on a video editing, yeah. doing something really, really creative. And you're really, really proud of it. And it gets like 1500 views. Yeah, it bums yeah. you out. It bums you out. Totally. In my mind, there's kind of like this matrix of the videos that I like to do. And then, you know, how it is perceived by the audience. And I can never tell. Like there are videos that I've just really enjoyed filming, editing, everything. And then it's a hit for people. And it's like, whoa, fantastic. But there are times where I invest like no effort and everyone is like oh, this is amazing and mm. the other way around it's so like i'm so bad predicting but is it hard for you guys to see you know like maybe this month you've grown less that kind of stuff like do you pay attention to that or do you get yeah, i mean who likes seeing those red arrows when you go into youtube analytics you know uh, I mean, uh for me it's weird because it's like my my views and my engagement all that stuff will all be up my subscribers are down and i can't figure out why and that's just something that's just kind of been happening and i, I sometimes i tell myself that's just youtube purging all the bots it's got to be it's got to be because mm -hmm. there's no way you know that uh that all those other numbers are going up and subscribers are going down yeah but mm -hmm. uh, one thing i've learned is almost never listen to the comments when it comes to video ideas because they're almost always wrong. Like, we want more book reviews. It's like, well, maybe you do. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. to <laughs> I would have thought everyone, everyone wanted me to show my coffee mugs, and then no one gave a shit. Do not listen just to, you know, most popular comments, for sure. <clears throat> you know, put out a, a community post and, and, and ask some things. I don't know. I have no idea. But, yeah, that's, that's the truth right there. My what, favorite what was that for you? My favorite type of videos to make actually is book reviews, but yeah, as unfortunately we know yeah. that it doesn't do well. <laughs> mm. yeah. well, that's in, that, it might be good video, right? It's evergreen content. So yeah, yeah. Steve Talks books kind of brought that to my yeah. attention. It's like, yeah, look, people are gonna three years from now they're gonna watch your review of that book before they're gonna watch your February TBR video. Exactly. Well, that's, that's very true.
Yeah. Or like my weekly updates do great. But I was like, yeah, but after that week, is anybody ever going to watch those? I mean, no. yeah, yeah. I'll get a comment once in a while from one like three years ago. I'm like, what the hell? Somebody <laughs> watch that? Great read, weekly update. That's funny. Man. So what, what video was that for you, Viking, where you were like, what were we just talking about? Just had a blank. Uh, the one that uh, people's comments. Oh, where people recommend that you make a yeah. specific type of video and then you make That's it. The, so one, I made a video that has been performing really well. It was called like the top 20, the ultimate top 20 fantasy series list. And I received a couple of comments where people say, were saying like, oh, you need to make other contents like this and this and this. And I was like, well, I'll try it. And like all those videos perform so, so badly afterwards, at least compared to right. the other, those other videos. So, And I yeah. hate doing that because I know that there are smaller channels that would love for their video to get 1,500 views. But I'm like, when you yeah. got 90,000 subs and your video gets 1,500 views, you might be doing something wrong. You know, that's the mm. way that I look at it. Uh, how do you find that balance doing videos you love versus videos that will get views and in turn money? Well, I have a real job, so thankfully I don't I don't count on this for income. There's always something I want to do yeah. is fun. Yeah. But for so, me, uh, I think my Stephen King content, that stuff I know isn't going to do well on book two, but I do it because I, that's my favorite author and I want to do it, so I'm never going to stop. But yeah, there are some times where I'm like, hey, you know what? This author that maybe 12 people have heard of, maybe I'm not going to do a full 20-minute review of that one. Maybe I'll just do a you know, YouTube short or something for it to, yeah. to get the spotlight. How about you guys? Uh, I think for me, uh, I have to make sure that the video that I make, if, even though I don't love them as much as doing reviews or series reviews, I still like doing them. Yeah. I think I have to remember that. Yeah, if not, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> I, don't think, I am a slow editor. I'm really slow at coming up with videos uh every videos you make that's after hours of editing <laughs> yeah so yeah i think that's that's how it is for me yeah mm. for me yeah, yeah go nice. no i'd say that i'm really really bad um trying to see what people is gonna love so i just always start from the point of okay do i like this idea do i think it has potential and every video i think it's going to perform well and at the same time i love them like there are videos that turn out to be more fun or that i feel better and you know it's just the process is easier but overall i'm not in you know i don't know which are the videos that will make good 100 percent of the times yeah. so it's just mm. i'm still learning though it makes sense i think well, i mean like i just did that one on narnia and I, I know my audience isn't really probably into you know children's literature but i was like i, I like to talk about stuff that influenced yeah. me so that's mm. that's that, that's why yeah. i would make a video like this so definitely something like that i would do for out, out of love or yeah. doing these red rising re-reviews when i know no one's gonna watch them yeah. but i don't give a shit because that's one of my mm. favorite series of all time absolutely mm. i'm gonna do that yeah, I think the most important thing is that you make videos that you are passionate about, right. yeah. and then you just don't really. But obviously, I know analytics and stuff is important. But yeah, I mean, maybe sometimes I think about I do have some videos that I think might do really well, um, and then maybe I'll do a book review in between those two videos. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. I do want to do a book review because I know some people appreciate them, but also because I enjoy making them. So yeah. you just need to have a balance. But obviously, I know people say just make the videos you, you love making. But if you follow that advice, you'll maybe have like hundred people watching your videos, and then you won't enjoy YouTube anymore. Which right. is also yeah. the truth. Um, Try to tell I, people. I, I want to make videos that fun. people enjoy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You want to help people, right? At the end of the day. So it's like what you were saying at the beginning, Patrick. Like, if you get more popular, you have this chance of influencing more people, of connecting with more people. So you, you want that naturally, but. Mm. And I think I don't know I don't know about you guys here, but uh, for me I think some of the craziest conspiracy theory that I've seen is that we get paid by publishers or authors. Have you guys? <laughs> seen the Man, I wish you know people still accuse me of getting uh, checks from Amazon because insane, I wasn't <laughs> well, because I wasn't shitting on Wheel of Time when it first came out the show. I, like I, me and Madison were trying to because I'm a positive channel. We were trying to find the positive and yes. talk about those things versus everything that we hated. And people yeah. accuse me of being on Amazon's payroll. I was like, I have sold probably <laughs> 3,000 Kindles for Amazon, and they yeah. don't even give me a demo copy to review. Yeah. So, no, I'm not getting any Jeff Bezos money. But, it, yeah, that's, that's absurd. That's absurd. Yeah, it's, ab it's absurd. I, I, I'm still shocked by how many people think that we reviews actually get paid for this. It's yeah. crazy. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I don't know about you, though. Uh, do you do you re receive comments like this, Johan? Sorry, I've got, I've got them. Yeah, you you got them right, Mike. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, all the time. I mean, especially if it's a book that I really liked and no one else seemed to very much. It's like, oh, yeah, I yeah. It's such and such author. You know, the payment went through. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wish. What, what, pay, what payment? We we end up spending money to buy the books. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. No. It, it it is wild. Hey, have you guys tried any other social media platforms like Rumble? Look, Mike. I tried. I, Rumble's I'm been contacting me, trying to get me to go over there, and I was like, look, I checked out Rumble, and it is. 100% political stuff. And I was like, I don't mm -hmm. think that that's the content for me. Also, YouTube changes their terms of service all the time. I didn't want them all of a sudden to say, you know what? That's a conflict of interest. Demonetize. Bye. And they just delete my channel. And I don't back up my videos. So if I lose this channel, I lose all my stuff. So no, mm -hmm. that's, that's that. I, 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 I'm going to keep it to, look, I tried TikTok. I'm just not, I'm just not the I'm not the content that TikTok's looking for. Uh, Instagram does really good. I think not as good as Johan, obviously, but I actually, my reels do pretty good on Instagram, but my photos, eh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. but no, that's pretty much it. And, and Twitter, I just use to, you know, talk to other, other, but I think that with Twitter gets such a bad reputation, but if you, you know, you take advantage of the block feature and the mute feature, it's actually quite good. You can get into a nice book community on there. I feel like it's a mm. really good. Group. I love Twitter for a lot of things, but I think out of all the communities, I think Twitter is the most toxic. <laughs> oh, no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Like I said, that's, you got to take advantage of those, of those, of those tools that they give you to, to, to really clear all that out. But before I decided to go back to Twitter, I decided, okay, well, first I got to grow up. I got to quit letting other people bother. Basically, if I wouldn't say it on my channel, don't say it on Twitter is kind of how I said. And second, just only talk about books <laughs> you know? yeah, talk yeah. about positive things on there and i feel like you attract a lot less negativity if you just every every tweet is something positive unless you're bitching about sports like i do <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah I, yeah i mean i i did create a blog um but that's gonna be deleted in three months time i haven't posted anything there for like i used to do a wordpress page way back when mm -hmm. we realized that like yeah. me and like my pod, my podcast co hosts were the only ones who were going to it. And I said, like, well, Yeah, get rid of this. So, you said you have a Twitter account, I saw, but I don't think you use it, do you? No, I actually, um, I mean, I love technology and all of that kind of stuff, but with social media, I've always been kind of like aware of the impact that it has, right? Like, there was a lot of people, like, in Twitter, very toxic. And I had like a personal account and it was like, no, I'm not using this. Mm -hmm. Then Instagram, I'm liking it. And I'm like, there's a lot of people there, but what I, check? there's a lot of stuff. We don't want to check to Pedro. What check, Tiago? <laughs> Next, you'll um, tell me they did not keep us inside just to change the batteries of all the birds because they are not real. What in the world are you guys talking about right now? Whoa, so, is this? Uh, now, now, Ryan, I do get contacted all the time by 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 a lot of self published authors. That, that that's new, but you, you're telling me that like real like like big name AAA authors are going to be contacting me. I I think the only time that's ever happened is when Jim Butcher's publicist contacted mm -hmm. me to ask if he could be on the channel i'm like oh uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's the only time that's ever happened to me i've never been contacted by anyone offering a paid review never never mm. and i don't think i'll reach a million subs you're very sweet thank you <laughs> hundred thousand is like my goal right now so yeah Four you're almost three. there you, i yes. think you'll reach that yeah yeah, yeah it's mm. it's slowed down but i am still on pace to hit it this year but you know you never know you know one day youtube might decide to to, to wipe out probably the 60 percent of my audience it's bots you know <laughs> <laughs> if we're being honest but you know i'll stop making fake emails now then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when i did start i actually i have uh you know this channel and i have my own my own uh personal one that i just don't do anything on it's just like for work purposes and things like that and when I did first start, I would I would always watch my videos from my personal account, thinking it would give me one more view. <laughs> yeah, I did that as well in the beginning. Yeah. It, it, it's it's <laughs> interesting things. Yeah, that video, like, yeah, so I was like, maybe I just create like a million different emails and <laughs> have a million views. <laughs> so see, if I was really dedicated, I could do this. And I'm sure they have programs and stuff to do that. But I was like, nah, I just, yeah, that yeah. wasn't really what I wanted to do. I wanted to. Because, yeah. like I said, I could have I could have made videos that I knew would have gotten my channel to grow faster than it has, probably. Uh, but I, I just wanted to be organic. I wanted to feel like hey, these are people who are interested in what I'm going to do and stuff. And, and sometimes I do yeah. consider 
some of the recommendations like, Hey, maybe cut the time of your reviews into half. And I'm like, mm. I don't think I could do a book review in 10 minutes. I don't think I could. Mm. Cause I'll do 20, 22 minutes. And I don't feel like I'm able to talk about everything I want to talk about. And then I get people like, Oh, you didn't talk about any spoilers. I'm like, yeah. Cause nobody's, nobody that hasn't read it wants to hear spoilers. And people who have read it are like, I don't want to, I don't watch reviews. Cause I already read the book. I'm like, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually thought, it, sorry, go Patrick. No, we cannot win. I <laughs> just want to say that. <laughs> yeah, no. I was going to say that a few mm. months already back, I saw a post that you did on Instagram, Mike, for how your analytics went mm. and how you started. And it was like slow growth and then it started to pick up. And I was like, okay, there's hope. And I found that really encouraging, really. So now that you're saying that it's slowing down, it just, I, for me, it's strange because, of course, I'm so much smaller. So, you know, your growth to me is like nuts. And <laughs> you well, I think like, what, yeah. what happened to me is it's like mine exploded during lockdown. You know, mm. people were home. There was more people doing stuff. And I was doing Wheel of Time, which is a humongous community. So yeah. it, it slowed down really after that to where it's just been it's been steady. But I've never had real just like burst. But the first the first third of every year is always a really slow time for all creators. It really, it really, I don't know what they change uh, at the new year or what happens. I, I think, like I said, I think they just purge a lot of the dead accounts and stuff. So it looks like your analytics are bad, but really your, your, your growth is probably the same. They're just purging a lot of things that are yeah. kind of dead at this point. But yeah, it, it can be discouraging. It can be discouraging, but just, just know it's peaks and valleys. You're going to have good times and bad times as a creator. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. as long as you guys, as long as you keep that engagement up in the comments, your channel will grow. When I first started and I could keep up with it, I was like, and I wasn't working a full time job. I was like, yeah, I can I respond to every single comment. And, and now I'm like, some videos I, I can't respond at all. I just, I just don't have the time because I, because I waste too much time on Discord. You guys have your own Discords yet? No. Okay. <laughs> no. I have a Discord for my Patreons, but that's it. I can, I cannot jump into any other Discord. I tried, but I just can't. <laughs> I fought it for a while as so I was like, that's, I don't want one more social media to take care of. And they're like, oh, it's no big deal. You just assign moderators and don't really worry about it. And it, yeah, I got like 8,000 users on my Discord now. It's, it's, it's great. But it's, it, is, it, is, it is one more time suck. It's like it basically Ooh. replaced Twitter for me of, of just like my primary time waster. And Patrick, I know you get the comment that you probably get the most. How do you read so fast? And what do you always tell them? Put the phone down. Yeah. Yeah. Book to another yeah. room, and I and and I, I realized I was falling into that trap too. So yeah. in January, I was like, I'm going to make sure that from now on, when I read, I leave my phone in the bedroom on the charger, and I go read in the recliner. And it's helped me a lot to get back to where I'm, you know, back up to like seven, eight books a month now. Yeah. And especially when you're reading these big giant beasts. <laughs> <laughs> That's really I the mean, biggest advice. Really, it's not a put secret. Your, yeah, yeah. Put down your phone. You have put no idea how much phone. time you spent on there. Yeah. Put down the phone. Don't watch so much TV. Like I, so many people spend so much time. Like, oh well, TikTok's great because it's sixty second video. Yeah, but you watched three hundred of them. You've just spent three yeah. hours. <laughs> you know. So it's like, is it really better because it's shorter? No, but you watch a, a billion of them. So yeah, I, I don't. It, it, even the name, story. even the name of the app is TikTok. It means time is wasting. TikTok, mm -hmm. TikTok, TikTok. <clears throat> That's really the the name of the app. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, perfect. I don't, I don't game as much as I used to, unless I'm playing stuff with my kids. I don't, mm. I mean, I will, there's a new Zelda game coming out and I'll do it for that, but it's, it's rare. It's rare that I have like, like a game take over my life. I don't watch a ton of TV unless there's something new out that me and my wife want to binge. And even then we kind of binge it over a weekend. Mm. So yeah, mm. you put the phone down and you'd be surprised how much time you have to read when you don't yep. do those things. Cause I mean, I, I would say the average person wastes two to three hours per day. Just yeah. blah, blah, blah on their phone, right? At least. Yeah. Yeah. More. <laughs> so when people say, how, on average, how long do you read a day? I was like, it don't really work like that for me because, you know, some days works, bitch. Sometimes my kids are being kids, you know, and mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I'm being a dad and stuff. But yeah. other days, it's like, yeah, I read like four hours today because I didn't pick up my phone. I didn't turn on the TV. You know, everyone's doing their own thing. So to mm -hmm. me, it's not a secret. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder sometimes, well, um, getting back to the booktube video and stuff like conversation, I sometimes wonder what booktube is going to look like in two years' time. Because as Mike mentioned earlier in this chat, is it has already changed so much just in the past two years. And yeah, I just wonder, like, will I be able to keep up? Because even now I feel like it's changing fast. Um, 
Yeah, that's the, the thing. When I talked about the the you brought up that video about our, our, our reviews done, I was like, I blame I blame TikTok uh, because people mm. now want their sales pitch in sixty seconds, which is weird mm. because my YouTube shorts do nothing. <laughs> they do nothing, you know. So. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. So who knows how things are. Going. I feel like there is a lot more, like I said, a lot more collaboration and discussions and stuff now. And yeah. people either love those or hate those. Uh, mm -hmm. It depends really what we're talking about. Like these do a lot better than if we're talking about a specific book or something, I think. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It, it'd be interesting to see where it is in a couple of years. I've had some people suggest that, uh, well, yeah, booktube's dying. It's going to be moving just to TikTok and, and Instagram now. And I'm like, well, I mean, I feel like there's always going to be a niche for the style that I do, but you know, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not as good at the editing as, as Issa and, and, and Johan are. So <laughs> I don't think BookTube is dying, but I think it will be changing, but I'm not really yeah. sure exactly what that's going to look like. Mm. Um, but just the fact, like, think about it. Spoilers are like, no one does spoiler filled discussions almost anymore of any books. And that was common two years ago. And that's yeah. true. So it's interesting. Uh, and that's where I get in trouble. That's when I get in trouble with my with my opinions on audiobooks. Is I, is I think they're both good and bad. I think they're good because a lot of people never read before that. And this is a way for them to consume. I'm like, great. You're getting great stories in your ears. It's awesome. You're consuming the story. That's great. But then I also notice a lot of people, it's become a race to them. Yeah. Well, how fast can I listen to it? How many <laughs> can I listen to it a month? Yeah. And then you try to talk to them about it and they're like, oh, I don't remember that. I mean, you don't remember because you listen on two and a half speed and you have no idea what happened in the book. And, and then people look at me, me saying, like, oh, I'm an elitist because I read the book or something. I'm like, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying, where's the fire? What's the race? Where, where's yeah. your hurry? Why are you trying to rush through these like it's some kind of school assignment or something? That, that, mm -hmm. that That's where I get in trouble, I think, when it comes mm -hmm. to the audio thing. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I but find it do you ever feel pressured to actually have read some books? Like, I know I keep bringing up Malassan, but I just feel like as a fantasy reviewer, this is one of those series I need to read. Uh, yeah. I said that I made that video like about a year ago saying, I'm going to finish Malazan eventually. And I still get comments, people being like, you need to shit or get off the pot. I'm like, no, I don't. Where, where's, what's the rush? Why do I have to finish it right now? And, and, and you just don't want to admit that you're quitting. And like I said, I'm married to a redhead. I'm not scared of you guys. I'm not scared <laughs> at all to tell you that I'm quitting a series. You know, I got, I got two boys under 10 that are complete nightmares. I'm, I'm not scared <laughs> to tell you I'm quitting a series. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't know. But people will sometimes say, like, I haven't read King Killer Chronicles, and I haven't read all the five books in the Ace of Fires and Fire. I haven't read Malassan. And people will be like, how can you call yourself a fantasy reviewer oh, yeah. if you haven't oh, read? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just read The Outsiders for the first time last month. People are like, I can't believe you hadn't read that before. And I was like, sure. <laughs> you know, it just happens that way sometimes. I mean, there's people who still haven't seen Star Wars. You know, I mean, it, 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 it happens sometimes. Yeah. It happens that way. Hmm. Yeah. So Gary wants to know, what are you guys' key areas of focus when you review a book? Uh, wow. Usually it's, I try to talk about what I loved and what I didn't love, um, just so people can get an idea what will, if it will work for them or not. And usually I don't go into too many specifics, except like the setting, what I loved and stuff. Yeah. So mm. I usually keep my reviews to 10 minutes or less. So. Mm. Wish I could do that. Mm. For I me, could talk uh, about this cup in 10 minutes or less. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love you for that. <laughs> for me, it's usually, well, it's same, like starting with overall if I liked it or not, and then maybe the world building, the pacing, the character growth or not, you know, the arc, the tropes, I guess, a little bit, and then, you know, overall the plot. And if I want to have spoiler comments, then it's like, stop watching because now like things start to get serious and then I just go there. But it's not super professional, I guess. Like I don't think about it like super, super like take notes while writing it. It's like, this is more or less how I feel. But I also know that I change a lot my mindset. Like I finish a book and I can be super in love with that book. And then I look at myself like six months back and I'm like, that book was good, but not as good mm. as I felt it up. So I think that's why I've stopped doing reviews overall because I'm like, I'm not reliable right now. You know? <laughs> like, I always give things at least a week to think about it. Yeah. Sure. Like I, I got a comment once that it was like, but you said that you hated this book 
in another video, which was oh, actually back checkers. Oh. Yeah, you're growing. Oh. You're back checkers. All right, all right. Things where I hated the puppy war. Like I read it, hated it, and and it was like hating strong feelings for like six months, and then it was like dude if i hate this maybe it's because a good it's a good book and i started to change my feelings to what the book ended up loving it but it was like mm. you you make up your mind you know like if you hate it you hate it and i'm like no i don't know i don't know i changed my <laughs> <laughs> oh, not sure not sure what about you patrick i'm i'm more or less the same as you usually i stated why i started reading this book or started reading this series and then after that i go to the premise the plot the themes and of course what matters to me as a reader because i want to know about these things when i start uh, reading the review so that's what i put in my book so i write the characters do i like them and then uh the, well, were there any action scenes how was the world building how was it detailed and regarding pros i don't know whether this is the same for you or not but I'm not too fussy about prose. Whether it's accessible, whether it's purple, I don't care. I really <laughs> don't care. As long as it gets the job done, then it, yeah. that's what matters to me. I know that mm. people, especially with Brandon Sanderson, people flake him so much for his simple writing. I don't, I don't feel that way. <laughs> mm. I think it is impressive that I can enjoy an epic fantasy series with such an accessible prose. Something like that. It depends on my reading mood. But yeah, that's what I put usually in my reviews, usually. I'm so glad you said that because with me, it's like, hey, if I'm noticing that this person, like Robin Hobb, I notice, wow, this is a really nice string of words she's put together here. Then obviously I know, hey, that's probably someone that's got a better writing style than I, I usually read. But I never will say, well, how was the prose? And this level? No, never. never. <laughs> not at all. Same yeah. format I've always had. What makes it good or bad? Why you should read it? And it's like my final mm -hmm. thought. It's always been something I've always done since I created that formula i guess mm. you'd say but mm. and even with that it's like it isn't necessarily things that i thought were great or bad something that as you as the reader might find it might not have bothered me but i, I gotta bring them up kind of thing yeah yeah nice yeah. way to do it so mm. just really more it's like a a parental advisory explicit lyrics kind of label on it so like hey if this is the kind of thing that upsets you yeah it's in here you know and when you read a lot of grim dark uh, you're gonna have to say hey there's a lot of this this and this that i know that a lot of you do not like and i gotta let you know mm. it is here yeah, that, that's yeah. how it always worked for me. That's interesting with the with the pros because I generally also don't really care, but in the case of Robin Hobb, for example, I mean everything is so 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 slow paced. Well, since the writing is beautiful and I love the characters, mm. I'm okay mm. with it. Mm. I think if the writing style was very very accessible as well, in the realms of the Elder Rings, I might actually have de left it. But the writing style and the characterization is what is actually helping me push through those very very slow moments. I think it depends on the book and the story they're trying to yeah, tell. Does, I mean, yeah. if, we're, if we're reading Brandon Sanderson, he's talking about magic system and Steven Erickson prose. Yeah, I'm going to DNF that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you ever it's... find your guys forgetting plots with series? I think looking back, because we read so much, I think they'll have yeah. a hard time. But someone will say, hey, what do you think about this one part in this one specific 10 book series? And I'm like, i having a hard time recalling it just because I read it three years ago. Yeah. Lately, I found mm -hmm. myself forgetting names that I should remember really, really easily just because mm -hmm. there's so some of these authors I'm reading have 200 mm -hmm. characters in their books. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? I can't remember that third Lannister cousin's name. You know, I, <laughs> it's not because I didn't read it. It's just because I've been reading so much more. And when you get my age, you got to move some stuff out to put some new stuff in. <laughs> all the time i can't remember what i did yesterday but i can remember you know the succession of the line of kings of gundor like no problem no problem at all you know but i can't remember what i did yesterday i think that's just a memory almost full kind of thing for me how about you guys mm. cool. for me yeah. i guess that i don't forget the plots but i tend to forget the names like not of mm -hmm. course of the book series that are my favorite but i was like okay so you know what were the names of these people i i just tend to blend it. And I think that there are times in which the names of the characters are so similar between books that it's like, is Lean the character that was in The Puppy War or was Lean and then Lean it's in the Bone Shadow? Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. It's similar. <laughs> it's, so, but names, no. And overall plot, yes. But specifics, like what happened at the end of book one out of 20? Mm -hmm. Overall, I like the story. That's what I can say. Yeah, I mean, generally when I read, I also do some of the struggle with names, but often I'll like think about, oh, he's the mentor, 
he's the chosen one. Yeah. He's the, oh. she's the sister of the chosen one. And that will actually <laughs> help me to remember who is who. But yeah, some of those names also blend together a bit. But I have a question. When you read, do you visualize what you're reading? Because when I read, I, I don't have an image in my head of what's going on. I don't really. necessarily like fan cast like actors or whatever, but I will kind of picture it like a movie while I'm reading it. Really? It's not a movie in my head. Same. Oh. I can't do it. I visualize a lot, <laughs> but I cannot yeah. imagine the face. Somehow I cannot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. same, same. Yeah, or if it's a if it's a a series that's very popular and has a lot of art, like sometimes like for Dresden Files, people are always talking about, oh, they imagine this actor and this actor. I'm just like, I imagine the, the very famous art that you see of Dresden Files as these characters in my head. Yes, like, yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, a lot of that I have, like, I mean, People got used to the the actors on Game of Thrones, and that's the characters they picture when they read Song of Ice and Fire. I was like, I read this 15 years before that series came out, so I hmm. I still think of a lot of like art when I think about a lot of these characters that I had seen over the years. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's why I often I really appreciate illustrations because usually I don't even think about like some of those people will say like, oh, this character like is missing an eye or something. I I usually I won't even register. A lot of those details i don't know why they're not that important for me i still mm -hmm. remember the persons but i i have no idea often if this person has blonde hair or brown hair yeah um, yeah it's exactly the same for me and as i'm reading i like i can see images sometimes but it's not like flawed it's like static images here and there if a scene is like uh... intense and i think because of that i enjoy more well no more but i kind of take more advantage of audio because i as I don't picture stuff either way, it's kind of like easier to get. I think that I might think be being such a big Stephen King reader is he will make his characters differentiated because of their quirks more so than their appearance. So yeah, I, I don't remember that this person had light hazel eyes or nothing like that. But I <laughs> oh, this character is the one that has like the clicking sound in his jaw when he chews because Stephen King just puts those weird little quirks in every one of his characters that I I remember which way everyone is because they have some kind of defect. You know, uh -huh. that's what I like about it. So that, that that's that's kind of more my thing, more so than that's why I can never fan cast stuff because I'm like I didn't yeah. even really pay attention to how the character was really described, you know. So yep. yeah. You guys take notes when reading long epic fantasy. I already kind of said I do, yeah. I do uh, sometimes. For the Grace of Kings, for example, that book is so ridiculously fast paced, or like you have like a twenty year old like the story is like 20 years old. Like, it's mad how much stuff happens in Greatest of Kings. So I did some take some Some people told there. me I'm going to love that, and some people told me I'm going to hate it. So I don't know where I'm going to fall on that. I don't know. First book. It is so different from anything I read, but I really enjoyed it. But yeah, it's one of those things. I understand if you don't. Yeah, Petrick's responsible for that one's blowing up, I think. <laughs> Everyone I that reads it said, oh yeah, Petrick said this and Petrick said that. So, yeah. mm. I love that series so much. And talking to Ken Liu, it's one of the one of the best experiences I've ever had interviewing mm. an author because I know just how stupid I am in comparison to him. He's so <laughs> right. He's so it's so intelligent. Oh my god! <laughs> That's me talking to Christopher Rocchio. Is like I'll bring up something. He starts talking about like Cicero and ancient Rome and shit. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I asked, hey. I asked Ken Liu, is there anything you would love to see being explored more in fantasy? And he went on about he would love to see how see modernity explored with technology and stuff like that. And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> 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 See, when someone else smarter than me is talking, I'm just gonna let them do it. I'm gonna, okay, and I'm not even gonna. Able, I'm not even gonna give a follow up. I mean, I even do that with Philip sometimes. Just like we talked about yeah. Beowulf, and I was like, I am so out of my element right now. Yeah. <laughs> Beowulf, you know. If like, I want to feel stupid, I'll listen to Philip. Okay, we we open up the video, and, and, and Philip does like a 90 second monologue in a different language, and I'm like, Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> what do I say to this? So yeah, I, I know when I'm out of my element. I know what my strengths are, and that, that isn't one of them. Whatever happened to slowly read? Uh, I think Mark's actually uh, writing. I think he's writing a book right now. So that's kind of oh. taking side. But the guy has like six young kids. He's busy. He's very very busy. Uh, I six? hope he does come back to the book oh. too soon too. Because oh, I love wow. Him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's the one who who gave me a lot of my grimdark recommendations. So I would really love to talk to him about these Mike Shackle books if he hasn't read them, mm. but I haven't seen them. In a while wow six kids how does he have the time for anything <laughs> I, I don't know i don't know i have two and i feel like i have this you know butter across too much bread as bobo said once <laughs> i'm gonna watch the fellowship of the ring later tonight i'll stand oh, nice extended edition i hope yes yes this we is are. the way 
That's the but way. we're gonna watch it with some friends of, of mine and we're gonna do like one uh, per weekend. Make make sure um, you hit them with all the all the uh, trivia stuff while you're. <laughs> yes. my wife loves that. I mean, she, my wife's like, you know, I've read this as many times as you have, right? Like, yeah. No. <laughs> when Aragorn <laughs> kicks the the oh yeah, yeah he broke a toe. Did you know this? <laughs> it is irresistible. Irresistible. <laughs> kids know all those things now too. So yeah, my kids, my kids loving those is a uh, is one of my my pleasures. What are some of you guys? Uh, I guess what? we're talking about something that's not book related now. You guys had like favorite movie or favorite TV show, anything like that? I always say this is a fun discussion because I feel like it could go any way. Mm. Mm. I actually Why? have a lot, but I cannot just choose just a few here. Sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't have like a huge amount of favorite movies, but I did watch a couple of months ago Midnight Mass and I loved it. Oh yeah. Mike Flanagan's a genius, man. I thought yeah. it was so, so good. I was actually I was like, it's so underrated exploration of faith and religion and stuff like that it was just so well done and it was scary the character's great yeah midnight mass it's yeah, underrated. So midnight mass is the best stephen king story not written by stephen king ever because that guy's a yeah huge, mike Langley's a huge oh. stephen king fan and you know, salem's lot was his influence for that and i love mm. it i love it so good mm. it was really good and i also really enjoyed the last of us yeah mm. <laughs> i didn't play the game I, I think Mike. I think Mike didn't enjoy that one. <laughs> it's, it's it's fine. I just don't think it's like mind blowing like everyone else. I'm like, oh great, so it's just it's just doing all the stuff that Walking Dead did, you know, a decade ago. Great. Yeah. Mm. I would say that I enjoyed I enjoyed The Last of Us. It's not as good as the game, but I think it tries okay. to be, you know, it tries to do what it can in nine episodes, and I think yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's my thought. No, it's not bad. It's just it's just it's yeah. just okay. It's, it's just fine. I, I enjoyed it. Like it was slow, and I enjoyed more of the video game, but I think it was fine. Mm. And I really enjoyed back then Westworld. Like I feel that right now it's a TV series that is like pff, it happened a long time ago, and the last mm. season wasn't as good. But that Westworld, first season was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, Westworld for me was absolutely a gem, really back mm. then. Oh, oh, I, I know. I, I have one. It is dark. It's probably my favorite sci-fi yes, series. Dark, dark. incredible. Yeah. Dark incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole like one to th season three, you enjoyed it the whole package, or just all fell of in them. Love? okay? All yeah. of them, all of them, all of them. It's just amazing the amount of plotline that the creators kept in his mind. It's just insane. <laughs> it's plot twist after plot twist, and it all makes sense. Is I amazing. think that was that was the first show since Lost where me and my wife were like getting out like the big board and writing like theories and like drawing timelines and family trees and stuff to try to figure stuff out. Yeah. Dark was mm. so good. And that's why it makes me sad that 1899 didn't do that well. And they, yeah. got, they, canceled ah, yeah. and they even really got to do anything with it. Cause those guys have a planned beginning, middle and end before they start. And I don't feel like enough TV show producers do that. Mm -hmm. No. Very true. I I absolutely love the Wheel of Time adaptation. <laughs> oh, you're, I hope you're being serious. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Patrick was shocked. <laughs> oh, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much any, any, anything that's, that isn't on Disney Plus, I'll, I'll give it a try. I'm just, I'm just so over Disney right now. Uh, I feel like Mandalorian was the only thing they had left that I was even trying, and even my kids don't care about it now, so... Yeah. I think we might. Uh, episode, episode three was a dud. Episode three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, two, two. My my oldest didn't like that 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 Mando was basically, as he said, just a little baby. He was getting beat up the whole time. And then this mm -hmm. last episode, like both my kids, just they looked like I was holding them hostage. I was like, hey, <laughs> you guys, we don't have to watch if you don't want. They like, we don't like no. And they, they both just bolted up the stairs. I was like, wow, okay, <laughs> wow, we that's lost, bad. We even lost yeah. my ten and seven year old. Things might have went off the rails. So. Mm. Until they ask to watch it again, I'm not sure we'll go back. Mm. I know well, that I'm done with MCU, though. I'm done with MCU. Just I, I quit. Besides Spider Man, I haven't watched anything since Endgame. Mm. I was like, that's the perfect ending. I don't need any more. I don't need to see the. I don't need to see Michael Jackson's backup dancers after he died. You know, that's how I felt about it. After, after just uh, Cap and, and and Tony are gone, I was like, man, eh, it's cool. I've got my full arc now. I'm happy. Yeah. And I walked Ooh. away, and everyone. I know everybody was wanted the party to keep going, so I understood why they why they believed in it. But mm -hmm. I was looked at as like a curmudgeon because I no, I have no interest to watch the fucking Eternals. Sorry, um, no interest. <laughs> yeah. You know, so or Shang Chi. I was like, this isn't the stuff that I grew up reading. You know, I was like, I was like they might get my interest with X Men because I love X Men, but I don't know. I, I feel like a reboot, honestly, would help them out immensely. 
Mm. That is one unpopular opinion I have about. I love fantasy, but I'm not a huge fan of superhero movies. Mm-hmm. There are very, very few I've enjoyed ever. I grew up just begging for these movies to be made, and now I'm begging for them to stop. stop. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just wanted these things made so bad. Like when I was younger, I would have given a finger to have a Justice League movie. Yeah. And then when we got it, I was like, oh, guys, stop, stop. We need to stop this. Yeah. Stop. It was <laughs> bad, though. So, and yeah, and that's why I'm like now where I'm like, I will watch anything that is original, that is not a rehash. Yeah, that is not a remake that is not superheroes. I was like, I like Succession on HBO or Severance on Apple TV. I was like, these are shows that are just completely fresh and original. And I love this. So I was like, that's mm-hmm. what I'm watching. No, I'm not watching season two of Loki or something. I, I have no interest in this, guys. So, it's but if you're enjoying it, I don't want you to wet blanket. Like you know, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did enjoy uh, the Batman movie because it was just so dark. Yeah, yeah but I think so. Batman, Spider Man, or Superman, I'll still watch it because that's just been mm. like my thing since I was a kid, and I can still share those with my kids. But yeah, all the extra amazing- MCU is just too colorful. It's too wholesome and family friendly for my taste. But the one that you're saying is the last one, the one that yeah, the most Batman recent Batman, Batman movie. The, no, Batman. the one Batman. Batman. I actually thought it was great. Yeah, Robert Pattinson. Yeah, yeah, I really I enjoyed that it. one. I, 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 loved it. I loved it. Now, look, guys, Scott, I feel like that Scott is, I don't say he's an easy critic, but I think he can pretty much enjoy just about anything. So if Scott is taking a shit on a movie, it's pretty rough. And when he saw the new Ant Man, he was like, my God. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm older than all you. I'm, I'm the point where I'm like, I like movies that aren't just special effects, computer images. I like movies with, you know, actors. And it's so, you know, actual physical items. So maybe, I don't know. That's why I love Top Gun. Top Gun was so Top good. Top Gun was great. Dune, yeah. so much practical effects that I, that I love that. So I, mean, I yeah. love Dune. Yeah. I loved more than the book. Yeah, same. Ooh, okay. Right. You always think it's going to hurt me. But I, I tell people all the time, I expect people not to like Dune. It's like I never say, Dune, read it. You're gonna love it. I'm always like, oh, you know, people have different opinions on Dune. It clicks for me, but it took the third time before Dune clicked for me. You know, yeah. oh. I, only read it once. I need to give it another read because uh, yeah, I get it's not for everyone. Yeah, when Petra gave it three stars, I was hurt a little bit, but you know, that's just because of his influence. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> but but it is true. This is another example of the kind that a book is super hype. You know, because people just call Dune the greatest sci-fi. So I went in with that expectation. I want this to be. The greatest sci-fi I've ever read. So, but it didn't happen because I love Red Rising more. <laughs> Red Rising is great. You're, uh, yeah. Red Rising, and, and I think you'll love Sun Eater when you get to it too. Because I said I feel like um, what I said with Sun Eater is like I said, imagine Red Rising if it was written by by Patrick Rothfuss. Yeah, like, yeah, I, that I got me. Idea. That that really got me. <laughs> a lot of people are like, oh, it's Doom meets Name of the Wind. I don't get that at all. But I can mm. see obviously Christopher was very influenced by Dune for yeah. sure. I don't think that Name of the Wind has the rights to a character telling their life story. You know, I think yeah. Dickens was doing that you know, long before Patrick Rothfuss did it. That's the only comparison I see to Name of the Wind right there. But <clears throat> yeah, it's a real, it's a series I think you'll eat up. And, and I'm, I'm I'm jealous really that you've waited. You know, because you can just fly through it and you don't have to wait the you know year between books like I have so far. Yeah, not too long, right? I think the series will be completed next year, right? Uh, he's he's completing six and he's working on seven right now. But he's such a fast writer that it, it, it'll be here before you know it. I think. Mm-hmm. Before we go though, I do got to ask Isa a question. And do you do you drink a lot of caffeine? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> because I watch your stuff sometimes, you and Alan especially with this, and I'm like. God, I'm like a corpse. These two have so much energy. How do they do this? And I, I just, I, I, I don't know. It, it's amazing. You guys just have so much energy. Maybe you're just, you're just vibrant and young, I guess. <laughs> I drink a lot. I drink a lot. I used to not drink coffee at all, but now I cannot survive without coffee. I need to drink at least two cups a day. Just two cups. Oh, man, two cups before, before 10. Yeah. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just drinking one now. Like I oh, used okay. five per day. Like, three years back and I started to get super anxious at work. I was like, come, oh, on, yeah. come on, come on, come on, come on. And, um, <laughs> and not just that, but in like, I have a job that every day I have like tons of meetings. So it was like super stressful. And I was like, coffee needs to go away. And I just mm. had one and then tea or something like that. But you know, 
energy. Oh, I said I watch I watch your videos. I'm like, man, how many how many Red Bulls did she slam before she did this video? She just about to fly out the screen. It's amazing. I love it. I love it. it's infectious and it makes me be like, you know what, Mike? Next video, you got to actually be awake. You got to actually like talk like you mean it. You know. So I I catch myself sometimes. I'll watch mine in in, in hindsight. I'm like, man, you're like. A, you're like asleep, dude. Wake up. So. <laughs> I'm actually trying to be more calm. Like I'm trying, like right now, like my new videos, I'm sit down because when I was, you know, just standing up, I realized that I was all the time like, <laughs> and I was like, okay, now sit down. You know, Michael, these conversations can go long, so I like to make sure. Like, we here. want a we want a part two of all your mugs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the whole thing about that, like I said, is 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 when I, I I did keto, and you just can't drink after that. You get floored really, really fast. And mm. so I stopped really drinking beer, and my wife was like, "Great, that means I don't want to see you buy another beer glass ever again." I was like, "All right, it's fine. I'll start buying coffee mugs." <laughs> and it really just started something to annoy her now and then when yeah. this channel got a little bigger and people started people started uh uh Sending just sending me coffee mugs and stuff <laughs> 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 so she's like you should get you like a cabinet just for your coffee mugs i'm like oh that's fine yeah whatever yeah. that is hilarious <laughs> how many yeah. drinks are on the table <laughs> Yeah, I'm sad that Green Bone Saga show got canceled too. I think that make really good television. They can. I think it will be picked really, up again. Really good. And, and you know, I'm, I'm sure. watching. You might not see the comparison, but there is in the Shadow and Bone show the Six of Crow stuff is very much street level, like gangsters kind of stuff. And I think yeah. Shadow and Bone would be, or sorry, uh, Green Bone would be awesome by that same showrunner, that same style, because yeah. they've got like the bowler hats and all that. So it just it just looks like something that they would. Be doing on on a Green Bone adaptation. Plus, I think it it will happen. It will happen eventually. Plus, Hilo did nothing wrong, and I want to prove this to everybody. I want this to become like a pop culture phenomenon, so I can explain to people why Hilo <laughs> did nothing wrong. I mean, no, I saw, don't, don't spoil me. But I, I, oh, yeah, you yeah, yeah. put it's in book two. It's something that that Hilo does in book two, where I'm like, Hilo yeah, did yeah. nothing wrong, and that's been like a big de debate between fans for a while. That's a huge debate, you know. Ah, is it? Uh, yeah. So I I actually think uh, so for me. You know, it's fine. So okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 did nothing wrong. I even said that to uh, to Fonda Lee, and she said, "Well, that's up for debate." I think. <laughs> so uh, I think I think my only thing about Jay Legacy that I didn't like is I I wished it maybe wished that it had been a five book series. Mm -hmm. I, felt, I felt like she was she was speed running to the end, and I, I hated that. Mm -hmm. I respected I what she was doing, and it made a lot of sense because each one of those books does feel different, and I love that. Yeah. I love that she did that, but it was just I, like. She's running through the years here really quick in Jade Legacy, and I would like to grow with some of these characters, man. You know, especially yeah, the it. kids. It, it, that, that, that's, that was the only thing I didn't really click with it. But the ending's amazing. You're gonna love it. You're gonna it's love the ending. Good. Expectations, yeah. expectations. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I, I got sold that it was the greatest fantasy book of the last decade, and I still love it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those those times can really work for me. I think it's kind of rare to experience something like that in fantasy books, and I think it's quite. A bold and also genius to do that in the last book of a trilogy. Now, but yeah, it won't click with everyone. No, I I love Jade Legacy since it was a multi generational ten years yeah. span kind of story. <clears throat> it was just so ambitious, but it worked. So mm. that just blew me away. But if you didn't like that, then I really don't think you're gonna like The Grace of Kings. But because the time span there is like 20, 25 years. This was book three, though. You know, if you're doing that yeah. like the whole time, that's fine. But the fact yeah. that she did that so, so, so fast. And it really it was just, I just wanted more. I like the yeah. universe. I wanted her to spend more time there. Mm -hmm. So usually where I'm like, hey, authors, quit fluffing, quit quit doing a Brent Weeks, quit fluffing your trilogy into five books, you know, and, and make it a solid story. Whereas that one, I'm like, hey, don't rush it. Take your time. I want more. Come I want on. more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I hope that she changes her mind and she goes back and writes like an eight mata, like a, or something like the mountain clan, like writes like the backstory of that or something. She, she oh, said that yeah. she's got so many other ideas she wants to work with. She probably won't, but even like the Jade Setters of John Loon, the prequel is just so good. Yeah. And I'm old enough to remember when Joe Abercrombie said he wasn't going to revisit the first law world and he did. So yeah, I, I think there's no problems going back to the well that and John Gwynn, I hope he visits the banished lands again. I think John Gwynn will do that eventually after he's done with blood sword. I think but so. yeah, he's taking, he's taking his time. Understandably. Yeah. As he should. I, yeah. should. As he should. I love the banished lands, but I would actually be okay with not having more books in it. Yeah. Well, the thing is like, I liked 
of Blood and Bone, but I love Faithful in the Fall. Yeah. Same, so I, I think it was just like, I, honestly, I would like to see a, like a bridge book where you've still got Corbin and all those characters in it again. I, think. Mm. So I mean, I the more character. time it's gone, I like my memories have faded quite a lot with of Blood and Bone. Like, I thought it was okay in the beginning, but, like, I barely remember anything from it. And I just felt it was a inferior version of The Fateful and Fallen. Right. In a lot of ways. <laughs> I think the thing was, like, the whole time, every time they would start talking about those characters from Fateful and Fallen, I'm like, oh, yeah, I want to hear more about this, you know? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know that, I know that feeling. <laughs> that did happen. And where you say, like, I, I don't have, like, a very much of a lasting impression of Blood Bone, but I could tell you stuff that happened in Fateful and Fallen, like, it was yesterday, because it, oh, yeah. it was so good. So, Patrick, I think that is the greatest of your recommendations to me, was telling me I need to... I need to move John going to the top was your exact words. And I'm so glad that I did. I read that right after I finished Wheel of Time. Oh, just, wow. Just what I needed. Yeah. It was so good. So good. So, yeah. Ethan, if you're looking for a series to pick up, there you go. Faithful in the Fallen, yeah. John Glenn. <laughs> I was actually thinking, like, I need any of you guys or all of you guys doing uh, green, dark, Book recommendations for newbies, something like that. Like, if green I want dark to. For newbies? Hmm. Yeah. If I want to start reading. What are the books that will get me there in a good way? It's a good video sure. idea. I have a recommendation for those. I tell everybody Red Rising because I think Red I Rising is a Red great. Rising. And this is the thing. It's like, Patrick, you might have heard this. People who've only read the trilogy and they don't read the sequel books. I'm like, why? why, why? It's still going. <laughs> anyway, he starts in, okay, this might have been the Hunger Games crew. And they're grown up a little bit now, the readers. And every book gets darker and darker and to the point to where you're in Dark Age, which is the most recent book before the one that's coming out this summer. Yeah. yeah. I swear to God, you would have told me that was ghost written by Joe Abercrombie, and I believe you. Because it's just yeah. so grim and bleak. And it's just like, I think it's it's a good, slow approach to where, hey, I'm okay. going to hold your hand as I walk you into the darkness. Because it doesn't start that way. But holy yeah. crap, does it get yeah. brutal. So I think that's a perfect entry into Grim Dark for anybody. Dark Age is just an it's awesome really, Dark Age is really, it's really it's dark. Really yeah. Dark Age is so brutal, man. I can't wait to reread it. How's your reread going on uh, on that, Patrick? I'm going I'm going to start Golden Sun next week. So I'm pretty excited. Yeah, yeah, Golden Sun. Pretty excited. Golden Sun's still great. It's still great. So yeah, even if you guys, it's, it's, it's also a good entry into sci-fi if people have a yeah. lot of sci-fi, I think, because it has a lot of fantasy kind of terms and stuff that you're going to be able to get on board with. Yeah, I still need to pick up Red Rising. Yeah, but I do own the whole trilogy, so yeah, sure. it will happen soon. <laughs> Alrighty, well, I want to thank anyway. you guys for uh, for doing this, uh, help me uh, work the time zones out here. Uh, I'm up this early anyway. I've got kids, so it's not a big deal to me. But I'm <laughs> glad we were able to do this. It's probably like dinner time, or we're, it's probably lunch and dinner wherever you guys are. What time is it <laughs> where you guys are right now? It's three p.m. Four p.m. Uh, it, 10 p.m. Yeah, I need to have dinner. <laughs> Patrick's oh. in the future. I should just ask him that the March Madness score is down. <laughs> and he's not in the Philippines. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know why. I told, I have no idea why I said that. I have no I know he's not in the Philippines. And I said it anyway. So that's a, the that's a thing is I don't I do not do a lot of cuts in my videos. And I'm like, eh, it's live. You mess up sometimes. Yeah, just go with fine. it. You know, as long as I didn't say something like okay. offensive, it's, I'm always it's like, yeah, just leave it in there. You know, but, <laughs> Uh, but thank you for making the time. It's It's been great. And I know you guys' channels are just going to continue to blow up. And my TBR is going to continue to blow up. And Issa, something you're going to learn as your channel gets bigger and bigger is your TBR is going to get bigger because you can get so yeah. many people recommending stuff to you. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, I've already seen that a little bit. And it was like, I have the, I don't have the time, but cool. Yeah. So. Yeah, I will never have time to read everything I want. That's why I'm like, no, I'm not going to reread Wheel of Time. I've ain't got time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys so much and uh and uh everybody will make sure you subscribe to everybody here i've got links to their channels down below and uh if you haven't already and uh have a great weekend thank you mike bye thank you